my lovely, lovely imps to yet another installment of Drama Mama Investigations. Uh, on this show, we take a piece of popular internet drama and we dive into it deep. We get all the receipts and we summarize it up so that you don't have to be left out of the loop. Uh, if that's something that interests you, please press the like button on the on the like below. You can click the screen and press like and also consider subscribing because I have an entire playlist of drama mamas and you will find yourself so up to date in like literally half the time it takes. You might see the playlist and go, oh my God, these videos are so long. I promise you, me researching everything to explain the drama takes so much longer, but today's drama is a particularly special one. And it was a particularly special investigation. And the reason for that is because Jesus Christ, you goddamn streamers, streamers, not me, I'm, I'm not like this, no. But streamers, streamers, you are the messiest bitches on the entire goddamn planet. There is no one on the entire planet who is a, a messier bitch than a streamer, okay? It is, oh my dear God, you guys have no idea what we're about to talk about. Well, you do, because I told you. And what we're gonna talk about is the latest gigantic Twitch uh, drama Twitch is exploding, and it's exploding over gambling? It's exploding over sexual assault allegations? It's exploding over interpersonal ego conflicts and a large breakup? Well, the answer is a little bit of all of them, okay? It's gonna be really interesting, okay? Cause uh, boy, oh boy. Now, Twitch has been having some interesting times recently. In my last stream, which you can find in my, uh, my VOD playlist really, really easily. In my last stream, uh, I talked about how uh, uh, Twitch has finally taken action on gambling and also how Twitch has made a massive, massive pay cut to the vast majority of their uh, partnered streamers. Um, and both of these things are, are uh, very interesting decisions for Twitch to make. And we're gonna get into all of this, but if you wanna see the like details about each one, that's on the last VOD and we'll have videos coming out on those, like edited videos on those coming out soon. Keep your eyes peeled or go check out the last VOD on the playlist. Um, I went way in deep on both of these, but today we're fixating on the drama, okay? And this particular drama starts with something called shit camp. Now you might go, if you're not into the streaming scene, you might go, what, well, shit camp? Really? That's what we're talking about today is, is fucking shit camp? Oh, great. No, 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 you just need to get used to this. This is everything about streamers. Streamers do this all the time. They have no awareness of what they're doing whatsoever. They just call things shit camp and poop barf and, and butthole, uh, butthole concert and uh, all the stupidest things that you can come up with, uh, come fart the, uh, the, the, the musical. It's just anytime a streamer does something, it has to be something stupid like that. It's, it's, I'm not kidding you. It's, it's every goddamn time, okay? Um, and, uh, and it, it's just how it goes. Yeah, but the butthole, yeah, exactly. The, yeah, the butthole concert, that's what I'm saying. Streamers are scat Andes. It's not just scat, it's basically anything immature. Now, part of this is because a, there's a, like a lot of viewers in streaming spaces, specifically in gaming spaces are really young. And so they appreciate like sub SpongeBob level humor. You know, they're just kind of like, tee hee, you said butt, tee hee, you said fart. Um, but the other part is just because that's streamers, even the adult ones, even the adult streamers are just, they're very, very immature, you know? They're super immature. Unlike me, I'm always very mature. I don't make any stupid jokes. I don't have a fart sound on my, uh, on my soundboard. I don't have my this sources that I made it on my soundboard. Up. You know, I don't have nothing silly ever. I'm very, very mature, you know? You know, and I, I don't have this one, definitely. <sighs> That is definitely not one of my sound effects, you know, uh, you no, know, these are just, you know, these are just samples of the type of stuff. Anyway, all of this is to say, let's talk about Shit Camp, okay? I'm gonna show you the website for Shit Camp first, that's where we're gonna start with this whole thing. And, and, and the reason why I need to show you the Shit Camp website, um, is because 
you're gonna see a lot of very, very, it's, it's got some useful vid visual aids, okay? So here's Shit Camp, all right? This is the website. Now, Shit Camp has a bunch of VODs because Shit Camp is like an event. So there's like, a, you know, the people involved, their VODs are listed here. They have a whole bunch of clips. You know, it looks kind of like Twitch. They've got their little peepo icon here. You can, maybe we can get this one zoomed up. Look at that. They've got a little, little, uh, Smokey the bear, but he's Smokey the peepo or peepo the frog or something. Anyway, it's cute. I like their logo. Now, if you're wondering what's this about, I'm just going to give you a quick descriptor from, from, from the horse's mouth, so to say. Here we go. Bear with me. It's 2022, one year after the original shit camp. Oh! 16 streamers find themselves stuck in a campsite and have to complete the escape the sunlight and go back to their stream rooms. Watch along for a week's worth of streams in which two teams go up against each other while forging friendships, navigating the outdoors, and embarrassing themselves. All in the name of content. <laughs> Will XQC show up? Will Hassan back, uh, will Hassan's back last the whole week? Will Maya ditch her team to save another bird? Shit Camp Season 2 kicks off on September 5th, 2022. Now, I hate to tell you this in advance, but things did not go as planned for Shit Camp. In fact, they didn't really go as planned at all. And we're gonna get into all of that, but uh, so this is Adept the Beast. This is the Austin show. You guys have probably heard of Austin. This guy's been around a while. You've probably heard of a lot of these. Brit -t -t. You've got Seer. You got E Rob. Look at that. There's Hassan. He's a political streamer. We all know about that because we're over in the political space most of the time. This is Ludwig. Ludwig is a, you know, he's a YouTube streamer. He's one of YouTube's biggest streamers, if not YouTube's biggest streamer right now. You got Casey Tron, Maya, Myth, QT, Cinderella, Rich Campbell, Will Neff, Valkyrie, Mia Malkova, and Zoyle. So a lot of big names. Now, some of these names you're going to hear a lot more tonight. Now, you might be noticed, you might notice one thing, which is a little interesting, and that is that they make a joke in their promotional about XQC showing up, and yet there is no XQC on this list. So perhaps, do you think that might answer the question? Hmm. Yes, as it turns out, not only did this show lose XQC at literally the very last minute, as in like the, almost the day of the event, he said, I'm not gonna go. Uh, and, but, but also, they had also previously lost one of their other biggest streamers, a guy by the name of Soda Poppin. You all probably know who Soda Poppin is. He's way more famous than me, so I feel like he needs no, uh, uh, you know, Introduction and the same thing goes for of course XQC uh, for those of you who don't know XQC is the third largest streamer overall on Twitch dude is Dude is very popular. Okay, very 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 popular How long did it take you to arrive at this being the inciting incident? Oh, this is this is only like the localized inciting incident It took me a long time to sort through exactly what's going on and what I'm gonna explain this all to you because it gets really confusing really fast, but thankfully I've done a lot of work on this. Guys, fuck, oh my God, I wanna show you. I wish I could show you the whole document. Like this document is my whole, like all these links and shit are, is, is just my notes for today's stream. It did take ages. I spent so much time on this thing. It took me way longer than I wanted to, but don't worry, it's worth it, okay? It's worth it because you guys are gonna have a fun time. All right, so. Shit camp. Shit camp is gonna happen. Now, something you should know about shit camp. This was not like a small project. As you can see just by the names involved, these are some of the biggest names in streaming. This is basically like a, a giant celebrity throwdown bash. You know, it's it's a big deal. And having Soda Poppin' back out was bad. You know, it, it hurts the show and whatever, and it sucks to not have a big streamer there, but it's not the end of the world. And they knew in advance that Soda Poppin' wasn't gonna be there. XQC, however, XQC, the third largest streamer overall on Twitch, 
just just decided not to show at the last minute. And this show, again, uh, has a lot of, has sponsors. This show has an entire team working on it. This, te this show has multiple teams working on it. It's a big deal. There was a lot that went into this, a lot of planning. And I'm not like standing for the shit camp people. I'm just saying, not just, not only uh, does does like each streamer bring their own people and have their own investment into this thing and their own time that they put into it but the organization as a whole had an incredible amount of work going into it and um <laughs> and that made a lot of people mad okay it made a lot of people very 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 angry at xqc now this is where the drama starts to fracture and you might even go well Okay, I'm following so far, so how do we get to the other stuff you mentioned? Like the sexual assault and the gambling. And this is the part where I have to tell you in advance, uh, everybody, just so you know, uh, we're gonna be talking about sexual assault. So trigger warning, content warning, be aware. Uh, it's not gonna be super, I don't think it's gonna get super, super explicit, um, but we are gonna be talking about it. So just be aware that that's on the table. We have to talk about it when we're gonna talk about this. So. XQC says, hey, I'm not showing up to this huge event with all these other streamers. And a lot of people involved in that are like, dude, what the fuck, man? What the fuck is going on? So all of these streamers are all suddenly bickering about what the fuck's going on. Why the hell is the biggest person on our entire lineup just no showing right before the event is supposed to go live? He's just gone. And uh, and so there's there's people involved with it. There's other streamers who are like, hey, what's going on, man? And of course, XQC being a streamer and streamers never ever letting their life uh, like sort things out off stream. And also, well, your life is your stream in a lot of ways. Well, he decided to talk about it on his stream. And at first, XQC was like, all right. I've been having some family issues, okay? And, I, and it came down to family versus going to this event. And I chose my family. And some people were like, well, bro, we get it. You know, it's a, you know, your family is important. Family's fucking important. It's all about the family, 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 family. It's all about the Fast and the Furious family. We're doing a live here. It's all about the Fast and the Furious family. Uh, family, family, family. Um, so people got that, you know, to a certain degree. But, but then... As he kept talking about it, it seemed more and more like it wasn't just about family. And that's when things got really, really messy. You see, I'm gonna go back to this list real quick because I gotta show you some, some pictures here. Remember the shit camp lineup? Well, this streamer right here, Adept the Best, is now XQC's X. Yeah, they were dating as a and and they were both going to be a part of this event event, and they broke up. Yeah, X XQC. So that's what actually started to come out is this idea that oh maybe it's more than that maybe there's a bunch of awkwardness between these two really high profile uh, streaming celebrities. And then the shit really hit the fan because these two started arguing about their relationship via Twitch. XQC is streaming, Adept is streaming, everybody else is streaming and reacting to it all at the same time. And in real time, you have all of the entire website's biggest streamers all talking about the same thing, including the people involved. XQC and Adept are both talking about each other live. There are people reacting to it. They're sending clips back and forth. They're reacting to each other's streams. They get into an argument that goes on for three hours on their stream. And of course, the viewers are involved. Let me show you something real quick, okay? Hold on, I'm gonna show you guys something real quick. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is gonna blow your mind, okay? Let's take a look. This is XQC's uh, stream stats, okay? Highest viewers of all time, 312,000 live concurrent viewers. His average viewers are 70,686. So this guy's, I mean, that's a lot of people. That's average. And during drama, 
I mean, hell, actually, we might even be able to find out. I could probably tell you. Hold on a second. I could actually get you this. One second. Let's find out. Let's look at XQC. Let's see what his uh, what his recent what his recent views have been. So we got back on this twentieth. We had one hundred and nine thousand. We've had seventy thousand. We've had seventy six thousand. We've had sixty eight thousand. This is around the time when the drama was starting to pick up. So we're talking just unbelievable numbers of average viewers who are watching. I mean, this stream went for 20 hours and the average viewers over that time was 71,000. At the peak of the September 20th stream, 227,000 people were watching with a 109,000 average over 18 hours of streaming. Holy fuck. And keep in mind, amid all of this, is a very public breakup between two of the people involved in this shit camp thing. So you guys can imagine exactly what happened here. Harassment, uh, anger, uh, speculation. In fact, what I wrote in my notes was, uh, was the following. Uh, let me see if I can get this here. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, like I said, XQC's many, many fans and all and adepts, many, many fans began to speculate on the drama based on little bits and pieces being picked up from XQC. Now, um, there was some fault involved in this breakup, and I'm not going to get into it because that's not what we're here for. I'm not here to actually talk about that portion. We're going to talk about other things. Uh, Trust me, just just bear with me. This is not this is the least interesting portion of the entire thing. But there's this big back and forth happening. And of course, all of the parasocial fans are getting on board. So you got people being like, oh, bitch whore. Blah, blah. And you got this other guy being like, oh, what a slob. He's a misogynist. Blah, blah. And there's all this shit going on. And then you have another person from shit camp, a, a creator by the name of uh, of QT Cinderella, who posts a, uh, uh, a, 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 a Twitter post that says that, hey, XQC, it was super irresponsible for you to sort of pin this event, uh, you know, to pin this event falling apart on your ex, because now there's your entire audience and a lot of other people's entire audience are basically mad at her for making the event not happen. And everybody's audience on Twitch is super misogynist. So you know how that's gonna go. And of course, you know, she was right about that aspect. She was super right. Now, of course, all of the fans said, oh, what the fuck? QT Cinderella is calling, is, is calling XQC a misogynist? What? Ah! And they freaked out and there's all the anger and all that. And of course, she never actually said that. She said that you should be able to expect misogyny in gaming spaces on Twitch and you need to be more careful about how you go about things, okay? But uh, I just wanted to make sure that we got that out there. Okay, so this is the this is the conversation that's going on. All right. So there's all this rage and anger going on about the shit camp thing. There's all this rage and anger going on about the breakup between uh, uh, between Adept and XQC. These enormous streamers. Uh, let's look up. I mean, can we get Adept? Uh, let me look. Let me see here. It's uh, what's the what's her full channel? Here we go. Here's Adept the best. So Adept the best. Obviously a much smaller streamer on average than anybody of the other people involved, but nonetheless has a huge profile. But as you can imagine, you having an average, you know, average of a thousand viewers or so, or an average, I guess, an overall average of the last 14 days of about 2,000, that doesn't really stack up against a guy who can pull 200,000 viewers, a guy whose average is 70 plus thousand. There's a big imbalance there, regardless of whoever was correct or not. There's a huge imbalance and there is some truth to be found in the idea that, hey, if you make your, your relationship super public, if you guys duke this out, this is obviously going to go bad uh, for... <laughs> This is obviously going to go, no matter who is right or wrong, the, the, the uh, public opinion is going to go against Adept, right? It is, it is a social creeping barrage. You have no idea. It's about to get so much worse. Oh my God. Let me tell you, it's about to get so much worse, okay? Oh God, I can't even begin. Just, just, just bear with me, okay? So, 
that all happens. We're not gonna go and watch streams reacting to their fight. We're not gonna watch their relationship thing because frankly, that's just fucking, that's too messy even for me, okay? If you guys wanna watch that, there's literally thousands of clip videos, okay? Of their stupid relationship fallout and whatever they're doing, okay? I'm sure it's very, I'm sure it's super uncomfortable. I don't care. I'm not interested in that because this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is what started this particular fire. Now, amid all of this, something else was developing, okay? So let's make sure we got this plot correct, all right? Shit camp, tons of popular streamers all in one place. It goes shit, okay? Shit camp goes to shit. It, the, the fault is largely levied at XQC by some people, and then XQC's fan base is kind of leveraging the fault onto Adept because she broke up with him, and then they work it out, and they're fighting, and, and, and then he's like, I'm sorry, I was wrong, you know, and there's all this drama and all this nonsense. And amid all of this, something very strange happened. In comes It's Slicker, okay? It's Slicker is a... I mean, he's a pretty small streamer. He's actually not all that much bigger than me. Um, this is a guy who, uh, he does a whole bunch of different, uh, he does gaming streams mostly from what I can tell. If you look at his, uh, I've never actually watched his show, um, but if you go and you take a look at, at his uh, his stats, you can see he does like just chatting, he does CSGO, he does some Grand Theft Auto, you know, he does a lot of stuff like that. And his channel is called It's Slicker. Now. It's Slicker has a, a pretty small following. Like I said, I mean, I guess he's a little bigger than me. He's a little bit more than double my my average views. All right, so there you go. Mid-size gaming streamer. Um, and, and, and Slicker, but Slicker has been up to some interesting things. See, Slicker is very well connected. He's friends with basically all of the major gaming streamers. He's friends with people like Trainwreck TV, who is a uh, a a very very popular streamer. Um, he's friends with uh, people like Ludwig, who we mentioned before, a YouTube streamer, a uh, formerly a Twitch streamer, gaming streamer. Uh, friends with XQC. He's got all these friends. He's friends with all these people. He runs in these social social circles, and it comes out that he's been scamming people. And when I say he's been scamming people, I mean he's been really, really scamming people. So let me just give you an example of this. I'm gonna show you uh, real quick, because like I said, we always bring our receipts here. I wanna make sure that I'm I'm substantiating these major allegations, okay? This is a little, we're just gonna watch a very brief clip from Asmongold's recent uh, stream about this. Asmongold did a stream analyzing this and also going over a lot of the evidence. And I'm just gonna play a bit and we're gonna speed it up so you get an idea of what we're dealing with here, okay? Keep it pissed. So this right here, this video that you're seeing on stream, this guy with the beard, this is Slicker. This is It's Slicker, okay? The video you're about to see is a video that Slicker sent out to many people. He sent uh, a bunch of copy pasted stock videos out to friends, uh, colleagues, associates, and at the end, he was even sending them to his viewers, okay? So keep that all in mind while we're watching this. He was sending it to big streamers, he was sending it to his friends, he was sending it to potentially family and viewers. I hope you don't hate me on this. It's so cringe, and I'm cringe for asking my brother, please do not hate me. Please, keep it personal as well. Basically, um, my- Hey, I'm, I'm ashamed to have to ask you this. Please keep this personal. Don't tell anybody, please. I'm very embarrassed about this. Bank account got locked. This has happened for like three, four days. I've been asking around people. Sadly, um, today, well, tomorrow is the last day um, until my credit starts getting fucked up. They got locked out and I was looking for people that actually work and that could, I, either I could ask if I could borrow from and I'll pay back genuinely. Give me two months and I can pay back. If you can't, no worries, my brother. If you can, but please, um, don't feel forced to say yes. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I couldn't get in the call to do this. It's so, I'm, I feel genuinely embarrassed. I've asked a few streamers, they couldn't help, and yeah, I don't mind it. It's okay. Um, so I just went out, asked a few subs I've noticed, and yeah, that's why I also asked for your age, because I don't. 
So what we have here is a video again that was sent to multiple people. Tons of people have confirmed having received this exact video from Slicker, okay? So Slicker, <laughs> Slicker was, was begging people for loans and he was promising he would pay them back. Some people he would promise to pay them back with interest. Um, and of course, it wasn't just these videos. He was sending out Discord messages. He was sending out emails. There are tons of these. And in fact, if we go right into here, I can just show you, just so we substantiate this here, this entire first part of this video on Asmongold's stream is just Asmongold reading out the receipts. Like, I'm gonna put this on really fast so you guys can see. Uh, okay, so we asked a guy for, for money, okay. Huh, read the convo, I still got my issue with my money, you can't borrow for a few days, and I bust back, not sorry bro, legit. What's the issue anyways? 200 quid for $300, bro, can't be asked explaining. Long story with my accountant, you get that in two days or less, or even today. 200, 200 quid for $300, I can't be, be, uh, be asked explaining. Long story with my accountant, you get that in two days or less, or even today, or tomorrow, you get 100 extra bucks, okay? Hey, or tomorrow, you get an extra $100. Wow, so Slicker is a Nigerian prince. Holy shit, I have no idea. He's at the top of the pyramid. Yeah, this is incredible. Oh my God, where do I invest? So I, I, I mean, what if I give him like $20,000? Do I get 30 back? I mean, <laughs> quick, come on, we gotta get in on this quick. You know, I gave Elon one Bitcoin, I didn't get the second one back. So, I mean, I've gotta make my money back with this one here with Slicker. We're gonna be fucking rich. Oh my God, what's this other one? Oh uh, wait, you work at 16 years old, bro. It's so yeah, if you see all these tabs open, that's because like I said, this entire part, I can just scrub through here and show you all of these are just evidence of various DMs, messages, letters that people have submitted getting from Slicker asking for money, okay? Lots of money. Some people he asked for thousands of dollars, okay? All right? Now, uh, you might immediately sort of be like, wow, uh, what, what the hell happened? Was this guy in like super deep shit? And the answer is yes, he was in super, super deep shit. And his stated reason was because of a gambling addiction. Now that's an important bit. So pay close attention to the gambling addiction bit. We're gonna come back to it in just a little bit, okay? The, uh, the, the gambling addiction was the reason, and now he's admitted to all of this now. He's had to come clean. He got so busted uh, that Slicker had to come clean to everybody. So he has admitted to this entire thing. Um, but the reason he claimed he did it was because of gambling debt. But if you look a little bit deeper, it's not just a problem of gambling debt because he wasn't just borrowing money to pay off gambling debt. He was also borrowing money to pay off other people that he was borrowing money from and then gambling their money on top of that, hoping to make it big so he could pay everybody back or maybe find a way out of having to pay anybody at all. So, uh, and this got out of control. Uh, th some people might might ask, well, doesn't this sound a lot like a Ponzi scheme? A Ponzi scheme being when basically uh, you convince an investor uh, to invest in you and you promise them a return and then you get another investor to invest by, by saying, hey, look, we've got this other guy involved. So you invest, then you pay off the first investor with with the money from the second investor and you take a little bit and then you do the same thing over and over and over again and you it's a Ponzi scheme, okay? Now, I'm not saying this is a literal Ponzi scheme because there's no business involved, but it is a literal scam. That is a, he is scamming people, not, not to pay off what he's saying he's paying off, but to pay off his debts to other people with a made up pretense. And keep in mind, he sent these out to many, many people. So Slicker was scamming a ton of people. By the end of it, uh, uh, there have been, uh, to date, over a hundred people who have come forward about with evidence about being scammed by Slicker. And the total uh, amount of money is somewhere close, uh, somewhere between three hundred and four hundred thousand dollars In fact, Slicker borrowed, apparently, allegedly, he took a hundred and fifty thousand dollars from train wrecks. He took thousands of dollars from another big streamer by the name of Mizkif, which we're gonna talk about that as time goes on. Oh my God. Do you guys see how, how wild this is? Do you guys see what I'm talking about? By the way, if you're here and you're enjoying this coverage, this is the perfect time for you to subscribe to Demon Mama. I do drama mamas like this all the time. I break it down, I give you the receipts, I help you make sense of it. And if you're having a good time, press the like button down below. We have what? 
Right now, we have only 278 likes out of 400 viewers. Please press that like button and subscribe. It's free to subscribe, and I have a million videos you've never seen that are hilarious and fun, okay? Tons of stuff. Anything for anyone, any imp will find joy in the Demon Mama live stream. So press those buttons, okay? All right? Because it's about to get even more real. All right. So the slicker situation, all of this stuff is unfolding, right? Slickers, uh, all these people are like, yo, what the fuck? You took my money. Now they're, now they're finding other people and going, yeah, Slicker told me the same thing. He took money from me. He said he was having an issue with his bank. He took that money and did this. Now, there's a whole lot of different uh, little bits and bobs about this whole thing. Like, for example, that uh, Sl Slicker was um, Slicker was basically uh, paying off the the most influential people first. Uh, for example, Mizkiff did get paid back by Slicker. Uh, there's a video. Uh, I don't actually have it here because it's not all that relevant, but um, I, I do have it in my history. Uh, there is, I'm not going to show it right now, but there's a video of Mizkiff, uh, saying, yeah, I loaned money to Slicker and he paid me back. So it's interesting. Slicker knew what he was doing. He was running a scam. He was running a, a con. Uh, he, he was paying off the people who were, who had the biggest platforms, the people who could actually hurt him and leaving the people who don't have big platforms, the smaller streamers, the viewers, etc., in the dark. Yeah, if you give me two likes, I'll pay you back with three next week. Yeah, it, it's literally a, 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 a old school money borrowing endless scam. Now, as you guys all know, I talked about the problem with gambling and gambling streaming on my last stream. So if you want to see that, go check out the last VOD that I did. It's in my VOD playlist. And also we'll have a video up on it uh, pretty soon. But I talked about the problem with online gambling. I talked about the problems with gambling in general. I'm not gonna, you know, talk about that too, too much here, but I do wanna say uh, gambling destroys lives, okay? Uh, and it is, it, is, it, it, it is and does become an addiction for many, many people. Uh, gambling addicts have an incredibly high suicide rate because as it turns out, in a world like ours where money is, is like everything, um, with regard to how you can participate in life, uh, if you get into debt, it basically ruins your entire life. So uh, please recognize how dangerous gambling is and how dangerous it is that gambling has been getting promoted on all of these platforms full of kids. And I don't just mean like promoted as in directly, uh, directly recruiting people, although that certainly happens. It's promoted as in glorifying it to unbelievable degrees, showing your favorite streamer, your hero winning big. Oh wow, he won so big. I wish I could be like him. Look at that, I could have a million dollars just like my favorite streamer. This is how uh, gambling companies manipulate people into gambling more and more and more and more. And with all of that said, Slicker, at the beginning of this drama was vi was was basically like yeah i have a problem with gambling it started with csgo gambling and it turned into real money gambling and now it's become this whole scam and that's where the next part of this story begins so remember how i said there were like three major parts of this drama the first part was the shit camp one the second part is the gambling one and the third part is the sexual assault allegations so because slicker was talking about gambling so much uh uh and 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 it became a discourse oh my god how did every single major streamer on twitch get ripped off by this guy how did this guy get into so much trouble with his gambling that he ripped off every single streamer in the twitch space and a ton of their viewers how the hell did this guy swindle three hundred thousand plus dollars from the most popular streamers and of course all of the most popular streamers are now talking about this and watching his video talking about gambling addictions, which, as you can imagine, resurrected a, an ancient conversation on Twitch, which is the gambling conversation. 
Now, I mentioned I'm not going to give super in-depth arguments about why I'm against gambling. I just said that I think gambling is very damaging. Obviously, you can probably infer I do not support gambling on streaming services. I think it's very dangerous to promote gambling to kids. I think that online gambling is a scourge. Being able to gamble from your home in isolation, away from people who care about you, away from people who can maybe intercede and help you uh, in the comfort of your own home where you could gamble away thousands and thousands of dollars without without so much as having to take a lunch break is terrible. It's bad, okay? I'm very much against uh, uh, gambling and online gambling and all of that, especially for kids. It's very, very dangerous. Okay? And apparently, a lot of other streamers think similarly, okay? And this is where we're going to start linking back to the shit camp drama because a lot of the people involved in the whole shit camp situation became involved in this conversation about gambling. Because as it turns out, XQC is a, is a gambling streamer a lot of the time. He does a lot of gambling and has a pretty massive uh, uh, gambling, um, he has a pretty massive uh, 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 a gambling sponsorship. We're talking millions of dollars level of gambling sponsorship. So you're starting to see where shit's gonna start linking back together. He even stopped for a while because he admitted it was bad. Yeah, and and keep in mind that that XQC's audience is mostly young people, and he has a sponsor, a, a massive, massive profit, uh, a massively profitable gambling sponsorship, and he will gamble for hours and hours and hours on stream in front of kids. And, and keep in mind, it's no risk for him because he's a millionaire. He can't lose. Even if he's gambling big amounts, he's not going to lose. He's getting paid cash by the gambling companies to promote gambling. But he's not the only one. There's a lot of other streamers involved in this. There's a, there's, there's, there's a whole bunch of other streamers who've done this. And of course, this whole slicker situation, given the fact that all of these same people got ripped off by the gambling guy, and he blamed it on gambling, it triggered a gigantic conversation about gambling on Twitch. And uh, what we had was people like Pokimane, many of you know Pokimane, one of the biggest uh, uh, female streamers of all time. Um, I don't really care about any of the other previous dramas, we're not gonna talk about any of that. Pokimane, XQC, Mizkif, uh, basically all of the big names, Ludwig, all of these big name streamers all came out and started talking about gambling. Pokimane, Ludwig, Mizkif, and a few others uh, uh, decided to actually make it a social media campaign where they would aim to pressure Twitch, okay? And you guys can see, uh, let me just let me just show you a couple of these uh, these types of tweets, okay? Here's here's the best, here's like the best example, okay? This one is the, uh, this was a, this is, is Pokimane's 4.1 million account. This is from just a couple of days ago. You should like this if Twitch should ban gambling. And then you have Hassan commenting on this. You have Grace Van Dien. You have so many people on here just Oh my God, so many people commenting on this. I mean, look at look at how many people engage with this. 4,715 retweets, 319,000 likes, okay? Massive, okay? Just massive, massive uh, call for Twitch to ban gambling. And Pokimane was hardly the only one. Many, many people had stuff to say about this. I mean, if you just even go through just the quote tweets, if you go through the retweets, you're gonna see basically some of the biggest names signing on or arguing against this whole gambling thing. It's a massive issue. Now, as it turns out, uh, it's actually not all that hard to make an argument for why Twitch shouldn't have gambling. It's actually pretty apparent. The damage and danger of gambling is mathematical. You can demonstrate that gambling is manipulative. You can go and read the uh, the design philosophies behind from corp from gambling corporations about how they design their slot machines. They are literally designed to trick you to take advantage of cognitive uh, of like sort of a cognitive. Um, it's not, I don't want to call like deficiencies because it's not deficiencies. It's just the way our brains work. There are certain things that are very, very easy to trick humans on in general, okay? Any human, even you. For example, uh, large numbers. Humans are really, really bad at dealing with large numbers and humans are by and large very, very bad at dealing with fractions. Fractions and large numbers are 
all over the place in gambling for that reason. Everything's a million dollars, a billion dollars, but you only gotta spend one dollar and you have a chance to win a billion. Well, one dollar, that's only one, and I could win a billion dollars. So your brain starts to struggle with these things. Everyone, even trained professionals, get tricked by stuff like this because it's just how our brains work. Our brains are tuned to constantly be fixating on numbers we use in our daily lives. You know, five, 10, stuff that we can easily mentally quantify, not uh, you have a one out of 762.554 thousand chance of winning something in this machine. You guys don't even, that you can't even imagine that, can you? So everybody's talking about gambling, right? And, uh, and then this happens, okay? I'm gonna show you guys something real quick, okay? This, this happens. So, um, on a, uh, on a tweet by Asmongold, uh, Mizkif. So if you're unaware of who Mizkif is, Mizkif is a incredibly, incredibly popular streamer, not quite as popular as XQC, but still about 33,000 average viewers, insane size, uh, high, uh, high maximum views of 122,000 people concurrently, 2 million followers, massive, massive streamer, uh, also involved in the team known as OTK. This team includes Asmund Gold, Mizkif, uh, Soda Poppin, so again, all those names you heard from before, uh, Seer, so basically, right here, OTK, this is the people who are involved, this is, this is most of the people who are involved in the shit camp thing, are also now involved in this gambling thing. So it's almost like this is just an extension, like, like the gambling conflict just added on top of the fires of the already the bad blood that was happening on the team. Now, Asmongold, who we mentioned before, who we watched part of his video on it, uh, he, again, huge streamer, huge streamer, okay? Now, Asmongold was talking about the gambling and Mizkif popped in, or sorry, Trainrex, another, like I said, I know I'm giving you a lot of names here. Most of you guys know these names. Trainrex commented on a, on, a, on a tweet by Asmongold. And when he did so, um, it was talking about how uh, he was, he was, he, Trainrex was basically talking about how uh, you shouldn't blame this shit on gambling streamers because gambling streamers weren't the ones who scammed you. It was its slicker. So, um, so <laughs> you can now see how this, uh, how this immediately started to roll into the other drama how all of these personalities that have bad blood with each other and some of them are mad at each other and some of them are pissed off about the way things went and now they're talking about gambling and it's become a discourse and Trainrex replies to Asmund Golds and says, well, you shouldn't fucking blame gambling streamers even though, guys, let's be real. It is true that gambling streamers weren't the ones who, uh, who made it, you know, slicker scam people, but... It was interestingly gambling streamers who contributed large amounts of money to alleviate his debt problems. It was, it is gambling streamers who have regularized gambling content on Twitch. And it was, it is gambling streamers who are currently accepting literally boatloads of money from gambling companies to promote a culture of gambling on Twitch that has grown and grown and grown. So yes, it is true. Gambling streamers did not we're not the ones who scammed all of the other streamers involved in this nonsense. However, I think it is fair to recognize that gambling streamers and those who have who have sponsorships from enormous gambling companies, including million dollar contracts with those companies, may have contributed to an environment that has normalized gambling, that has put people into debt, and we know it is literally a, 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 an adage, the house always wins, because it does. The house always wins. So if you're regularizing gambling, you are, by definition, if you're promoting gambling, you are making new losers. 
I'm sorry, that sounds terrible, but it's true, okay? That's just, it's that simple. By pure mathematics, if you are promoting gambling, if you are encouraging people to gamble, you are mostly creating new losers, new people who may go into debt. And statistically, you're likely producing a lot of new young gambling addicts. But unfortunately, it couldn't just end there, okay? Of course it couldn't. So when Trainwrecks responded to, uh, to Asmongold, another content creator by the name of Mizkiff, which you've met, I've mentioned just now, you guys know who this is, I'm just trying to make sure that everybody keeps this straight, okay? I know, it's really confusing, okay? Mizkiff pops in and says, Hey, Trainrex, didn't you run a scam with a with a cryptocurrency like six years ago? And as it turns out, well, it wasn't a it was it was allegedly a scam. Nobody went to nobody was charged with anything. So but it did happen. He did indeed promote a altcoin called Jolt which very quickly exploded in value and then very quickly collapsed in value, leaving the early investors to make crazy amounts of money and most people to lose tons and tons of money in what many would call a pump and dump scheme. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, so Ms. Kiff comes out of the gate and says, hey, didn't you run a pump and dump scam with your shitty Litecoin? You basically implying you're a scammer too. You shouldn't talk on this. And this is where shit gets really fucking dirty, okay? This is this right here. What we're about to touch is the part of the story that I care about, okay? This is the part that I was most interested in investigating and we're gonna spend the most amount of time on this last bit, okay? And that is this response right here, okay? I'm gonna zoom in. This is Trainrex responding to Mizkiff. Are you going to send Maya and Mitch, Maya and Mitch being two of the other streamers who were featured in Shit Camp that we mentioned before, are you going to send Maya and Mitch to railroad and blackmail me like you did those girls to cover up all those sexual assaults, you fucking scumbag piece of shit? You want to come at me and make shit up? You better be sure you don't live in a glass house, you insecure pussy. The people involved know the truth, but for those of you that are farming drama and coming to split conclusions, let me be even more clear. Ms. Kiff didn't assault the women. He orchestrated the cover-ups for his friends, which is exactly how my tweet reads. Oh. My. Fucking God. So, before we get into this, let me just reassemble everything that happened. Shit camp went to shit. The everybody involved in shit camp is all pissed off with each other. There's a whole bunch of drama. There's a breakup between XQC, who's a gambling streamer, and Adept. There's a there's now beef between gambling streamers and non-gambling streamers because a bunch of these people got ripped off by Slicker. And now Ms. Kiff and Trainrex, two massive fucking streamers who are on opposite sides of the gambling issue, Trainrex having a massive, massive, massive uh, uh, sponsorship with a gambling website, and Ms. Kiff being anti-gambling, now have beef, and Trainrex has brought in a completely unrelated issue. Well, to be fair, so did Ms. Kiff by bringing up the, the jolt coin thing, but it's more... But I will say, talking about, like, that's more relevant. If, if somebody says, hey, don't blame me, I didn't scam you, and then you bring up the fact that they did actually run something that is an allegedly a scam, and there's some good arguments for why it's a scam, well, okay, that's a little more relevant than bringing up the sexual assault stuff. But nonetheless, the sexual assault stuff made it out into the air. That's where we get to the... We get to this part, okay? This is this is this is where we're at right now that we're about to dive into and talk about this stuff. So again, we're going to talk about in this coming part content warning. We are going to be talking about sexual assault. We're going to be watching some videos here. This is where we're going to start reacting, uh, and I just wanted to let you know, okay? So the first part, this right here, is a clip 
that says Ms. Kiff was fully aware of the situation. He discusses the allegations on stream at around 2345. So we're gonna open up this clip and we're gonna see. Now, the reason why we're watching this is to find out if Ms. Kiff himself was indeed aware of this situation beforehand or whether or not this is train wrecks coming out of nowhere. And I hate to tell you not to spoil anything, but as you're gonna see, I'm gonna show you the receipt for this. He did indeed know what was going on. So I'm gonna play this real quick. 2345 is where we're going to. Let me just grab that right here. And we're gonna just listen to what he has to say about it, okay? Yeah, he's probably still depressed because he got canceled. Okay. He says now he's, he's probably still depressed that he got canceled. Let's find out. I'm sure. <sighs> Damn, that timestamp was a little off, huh? He hates that there's a narrative about him being creepy. I, it, yeah, that sucks. He hates there's a narrative about him being creepy. I told him, I'm like, look, you didn't rape anybody, you know? It's one. I told him, now this is referencing a character that we haven't yet talked about yet, okay? So, I actually realized we hadn't talked about them, and that is. Okay, hold on a second. I gotta show you who this is, okay? Hold on. All right? So, here we go. This is this is who we're talking about now, all right? So, we're watching a stream of Mizkif, and we are talking about a streamer named Crazy Slick, allegedly. Okay? And we are going to we are going to listen in, but I want you to understand this is not Slicker. You need to understand this. Attention, okay? Fucking if you do, listen, okay? Wait, that's the wrong one. Listen. This is not Slicker. It is a different person named Slick. This is crazy slick. So from here on out, if you hear someone referenced as slick, it is crazy slick. And we're going to talk about everything, but the what 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 um what Ms. Kiff and and Trainwrecks were arguing about was whether or not Crazy Slick sexually assaulted somebody. Okay? Now Let's listen back to what Ms. Kiff is saying about Crazy Slick on stream, okay? I know it's getting confusing, but I promise it'll make sense by the end. There's too many layers to this. There are too many layers to this, but this is what we have to do. This is why I do these streams. This is why you should like my streams, because I take the time to sludge through all this fucking garbage ass drama and make it make sense so you don't feel like you're an alien when a bunch of people around you are going, yo, 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 oh my God, Ms. and XQC, oh, what the fuck? I'm helping you. I'm helping you. And you should help me by pressing the like button and subscribing. Let's go. He hates that there's a narrative about him being creepy. I, it, yeah, that sucks. I told him, I'm like, look, you didn't rape anybody. You know, it's one thing. I told him, you, it's like, you know, you didn't like rape anybody. I, I feel like, I mean, like, he didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. He didn't. He didn't. Who is speaking right now? This is Ms. Kiff. Okay? Ms. Kiff. And like You can see it. It's in this is footage from his stream. Right here it says his name. He's talking on a stream. People make it seem like he did. People make it seem like he did. Like, when people, like, think of it, they think that he stuck his fucking dick inside her without her consent. Uh-oh. When people talk about it, they act as though he stuck his dick inside her without her consent. Uh-oh. And I'm like, that's what people perceive it as. When they don't... People probably don't even know the situation. People probably don't even know the situation? No, it's not. 
it's not 90% of people. Look, I, I don't think there's a single person that we used to hang out with that doesn't hang out with Slick anymore because of what happened. I actually think there's literally none. I don't think there is anybody who stopped hanging out with Slick because of what he did. Hmm. Because the reality is, worst comes to worst of it, it's fucking, like, sexual harassment, right? I mean, like, who get, like, no one, it, 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 of what you can deem of it, it's sexual sa harassment, whatever. At a low scale, it's not really a big deal. Uh, I don't it's think not really, really a big deal, a just, just a little bit of sexual harassment, not really a big deal. It really cared. Ja, I'm gonna turn this off if you're gonna be like this, I'll just turn it off. All right, so that's the clip, okay? That's the clip of Ms. Kiff. And keep in mind, this was streamed on September 10th, 2021, okay? So this is an old, this is an old stream in which Ms. Kiff uh, uh, absolutely confesses to not only knowing about the event that happened that we're about to talk about, but also admits but also says it's not really a big deal it wasn't really rape at worst it was maybe sexual harassment and nobody gives a shit now to me right off the cuff that sounds mega sus okay like really really sus okay oh the black death says the girl they're talking about was 19 at the time too yes we're gonna get into that yes I just hadn't even brought that up yet. We're getting into that, okay? So, the person they're talking about again is this streamer by the name of Crazy Slick, okay? Crazy Slick uh, allegedly did something to someone which Ms. Kiff did know about and downplayed it on his stream. And now we have train wrecks accusing Mid Ki Ms. Kiff of suppressing the narrative and sending people to pressure people. And this is where, like I said, you remember how I said there were a lot of layers and this was very confusing, but the last bit of it is the part that matters the most because it is. Because while I agree that there are massive issues with gambling, Twitch took action, some action on gambling. Even though I agree that, uh, that the whole shit camp thing was shitty and that the way that XQC uh, handled the, the, the breakup was probably not ideal and certainly led to harassment that did not have to happen. And while I agree that Slicker, uh, the other guy, not Crazy Slick, Slicker, the gambling guy, that the gambling guy uh, scammed money from a lot of people, that that's very bad. What we have here is the biggest names in Twitch all being aware that a, that a uh, alleged rape or sexual assault or sexual harassment happened some time ago and that there were prominent people covering for it and downplaying it. And now we have to find out. Now we have a, a now we have uh, the, the, the most important part of the story, which is we are going to listen firsthand to the streamer who came forward about this, whose name is Adriana Lee. Adriana Lee, uh, is a is a is a uh, a gaming streamer, uh, a, a fairly popular gaming streamer as well. Um, and Adriana Lee, after this all happened, came forward to talk about it. As it turns out, Adriana Lee has come forward about it in the past and has a lot to say about her experiences, both what happened initially and the people who were involved afterwards. So this is where we're going to, like I said, we're going to listen to what Adriana Lee has to say for herself. Now, uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna react to this, okay, everybody. So this is a stream that was streamed seven days ago by Adriana Lee, right here. You can see her. Here she is. That's Adriana Lee right there, saying, "Telling my story for real." And we're gonna listen through on this, and we're gonna hear the story from Adriana Lee herself. Hey. Right. Hi everyone, um, it's me, uh, Adriana Lee, and I didn't think that something like this would happen, but I'm not necessarily upset about it, um, because of 
just it's been a year over a year so it was like june 7th i think that i came out with the twit longer um it's been over a year since i came out with that twit longer um and over a year since i've faced the consequences of doing what i thought was the right thing to do um and doing what Ms. Kiff and Maya asked me to do. So, now we have Adriana Lee herself saying that indeed, Ms. Kiff and Maya uh, were the ones who came forward and made requests of her after she experienced this uh, terrible event, which we're gonna get the full story. What is a twit longer? A twit longer, it's like a little blog that you can post on Twitter. Twitter has uh, has character limits. So sometimes people use this website called twit longer, which lets you write as long as you want and then you can put it as a link in a tweet. Uh, it's a very common tool people use on, uh, on, uh, on Twitter. So just so those of you who aren't in on Twitter understand what's being talked about here. It's basically, it's, an, it's a way that you can, you can put a whole document inside of a, twi a tweet really quickly. Because the one misconception that, hi Bingo, I see you in the chat. Um, the one misconception, hi Kinsey, Kinsey knows. And uh, thank you Harry for the sub. Um, one misconception, here, I guess I'll mute my alerts. I'm sorry guys, I will thank you for the subs, but I have to, they're just too long. Um, one misconception that a lot of people, hi Blake, um, do what you need to do to become VA. Okay. One misconception that a lot- This is such a- this is such a mood. I'm just gonna say, getting distracted by chat while trying to talk about something important is such a streamer mood. It happens all the time, but it, it, it's just how it is. I get it. Anyway, let's continue. A lot of people say, well, why did you come out about it? Why did you say something? I was asked to say something and almost sent to say something by- Maya and Ms. Kiff. Hmm. Thank you, Bird, for the prime. Um, because it wasn't like drama whore Adriana Lee. <laughs> drama whore shouldn't have even said anything if she's so upset for the backlash. Drama whore, you know all this shit. It's actually ridiculous. Like you guys need to stop dick riding for real. Um, I was told to say something by Biz and Maya. Um, and let's not forget. I was king, like, let's not forget this, okay? Yeah, by the way, this is generally what we call coercion, just so you know. Uh, when you have, uh, when somebody hurts you, and then your buddies come and say, here's what you're gonna say, or else. Uh, it's a giant elephant in the room. So if you don't know what happened, uh, yesterday, Novaru, if you don't know who she is, you're welcome. Right. Good. Uh, she went live and said friend. a bunch of shit about JST. Slick that was, uh... This is Ms. Kiff right now. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit because he's hard to hear. Yeah, lot. this is Maya and this I is Ms. Kiff. Word. Um, it was pretty malicious. And, uh, she said a lot of things that was kind of fucked. Um, so, yeah. Novaru went live and said a bunch of stuff about Slick, and it got on live streams. I woke up at 10 in the morning, or actually I was already awake, and Maya, like, nudges me and is like, look what the hell's happening. I'm like, I couldn't believe it. Uh, I, you can ask Maya, it's true. It was, it was. We are people watching people watching people. Yes, we are. The worst day of my life. I mean, I was sitting there crying nonstop. I was having panic attacks. I didn't understand what the hell was happening. I Thank thought you for the prime. it was, I was going to lose Dramatic. sleep. And if, uh, you know, it would be the second guy with beach, bleach blonde hair leaving my house. Um, you know, that it's. So he was concerned. What he's saying here is, I saw that allegations were made a a against Crazy Slick, and I was worried that I would have that I would lose him from my team because he's talking about his streaming house, his stream team. So his immediately with concern was that he was going to somehow lose his talent. 
It's like an every six month thing with me. So oh, one lone coffee. Thank you. Uh, Only one. Coffee. Yeah, it was. It was, I was pretty scared. Uh, I thought I was gonna lose slick. It's a once in a six month. Oh God, man! I thought I would have on, to um, kick him out of my house because this is a video, by the I way, not YouTube video. Any of that shit. I just, I'm not. If, if just even though Slick's my best friend, I hang out with him literally every day. Uh, I'm not gonna tolerate stuff like that, and I would totally kick him out of the house. Um, because Thank you. what the I thought, store. which was the worst, was that this is right after I put the tweet longer out. Yeah. Um, that sounds like a bad streaming house. Every streaming house is a bad streaming house, okay? Just, it's just a terrible, guys, okay. Let me explain something real quick. Before I go any further into this, um, streaming houses are nightmares, okay? A streaming house, okay, oh God, there's so many jokes I wanna make. A streaming house is basically like a talent uh, a, a talent butcher shop, okay? It's like an abattoir, okay? Seriously. Uh, if you, like, streaming houses, I'm not saying, like, there are streamers who live together and who are just fine that don't live in a streaming house. Streaming houses are houses that are usually bought by a team, they own that, and then they rent it out or give it out to people who are members of the team, which means generally that your living situation is dependent on your work situation. Your work situation is dependent on the other people that you live with in that house. They always breed the worst situations imaginable. There is no way that you can live a healthy life combining your work, your personal life, your stream life, all of this shit, everything being combined and put into one house, being operated by a for-profit team that benefits off of drama. They make money, the, the team makes money. They're there to make money off of you. You're streaming there to make money. It's like, it's like if you were like, uh, it's like if you were had, if you had to live at Best Buy. Like if you got a job at Best Buy and you just had to live there with all of the people all the time, your entire life had to be there and you had to spend all your time with your coworkers. It's terrible. These are terrible ideas. They are always exploitative. They are designed to put talent in a psychologically impossible situation where you can never stop making content because if you do, you'll lose your housing, you'll lose your friends, you will might even damage your career completely. You can just, you just have to work all the time. There are always people around you who are on your stream team ta talking to you, encouraging you, pressuring you. It's bad, okay? This shit is bad. It's like, the fact that it even happens is un is almost unbelievable. It's like the dirty underbelly of streaming. These streaming houses are toxic as fuck. Every last fucking one of them are so toxic. Let's continue. But, uh, so we didn't really know what was happening you, because the person, the girl who this happened to, which is Adriana Lee, uh, there we go. I mean, I don't know her for shit. I don't. I don't know her at all. Um, hmm. And uh, the only person that kind of had work. I don't know her, and therefore my best friend couldn't have done anything wrong. On it, it was Novaru, and Slick was just sitting there having panic attacks the entire time, freaking out, not knowing what's going to happen with his life. Uh, no, not Adriana Ch Chesnick, not her. Uh, but I just want to say this, and me and Maya totally agree on this. Listen to this part. Uh, so, what Slick did was inexcusable. Like, I know he didn't do anything that was extreme, uh, which was the- What he did was inexcusable, but it wasn't extreme. It was inexcusable, but now I'm gonna downplay it. Mmm, it's, it's getting mega fucking sussy in here, isn't it? what a lot of us perceived, but what he did was inexcusable. Um, what he did was, he's just, I, I, how would you describe it? Let's back up a little bit, because we both thought a lot about what we're gonna say. So I'm gonna start from the top a little bit here because uh, it's feeling disjointed. So um, yes, it all started with Nova saying that yesterday. I wanna start by saying that she wasn't even there um, and it's, Everybody knows, right? It's super fucked up to bring up somebody else's experience like that. Already, already 
already not not explaining just just saying oh it's fucked up it's fucked up to it's fucked up to speak out like that while there are things wrong with like speaking out on behalf of somebody else that doesn't that doesn't negate the story this is a distraction without their permission she didn't say her name um but we're very grateful to adriana for doing the tweet that she did because she was forced into that listen to this let me rewind it for you yeah let's fucking listen oh. to this very grateful to adriana you, for doing the tweet that she did because she was forced into that position and she talked about her past experiences which is super brave and really really hard to do she and was also forced into that and like six hours right like she didn't even know what was happening and she was forced into tweeting the situation in six hours and so in her doing that i'm so so everybody is so sorry to her um that she had to go through that because it's so unfair um but it's so unfair that you that somebody talked about you getting hurt and then we forced you we we pressured you to say something so that we could get out ahead of it this is the most the most sus thing i have i have perhaps ever seen in streaming spaces do you guys see why we needed a drama mama to explain all of this what she said in that statement he said that what slick did, did was inexcusable and that's true because slick made people uncomfortable even though it wasn't his intention. Okay, that's the main thing I want to pull from that, okay? I also would like to show you this. There's just a lot of things that I've compiled over the past year that just point out, like, mostly the hypocrisy in the scene, in the way I've been very belittled as a content creator. To the point where I almost reached out to Ms. Kiff and said, hey, like, what the fuck? Like, what the hell? Like, you, everything that you promised, everything that you and Maya promised is not happening. Like, that I would still be accepted. And I want to share this. When was this stream? Clip. This was streamed. This stream right here, Adriana Lee's stream, was, was streamed seven days ago. So, like I said, we're doing, we're looking at the drama as it already it already happened and of course there's still discourse about it tons of it which is why we're talking about it so you can be in the loop i mean i i will i will pretty much fucking say it i he he harassed that girl so this is really hard to hear but what he said is i will pretty much say it he harassed that girl notice how he's using very specific language he's not he won't say assault he won't say anything else. He won't use the terms that the victim used. He just says, oh yeah, it was it was harassment because that's downplaying. That's making it seem like it was no big deal. It's really hard to hear him. I'm sorry. I'll just try to read it. That's not my, that's not on me. This is just Adriana Lee's levels were really low on this video. He did. Uh, and, and, you know, I, he needs to get better. He needs to do shit. He better. needs to get better. I can't turn up the volume. It's, it's just as loud as it goes. I, I really think. He has a lot to work on, man. He has a lot to work on, I, man. I will, I will pretty much fucking say it. I, he, he harassed that girl. He harassed that girl. By, by the way, it is extra disgusting that th over all of this, there's just a big sponsored by Mountain Dew Baja Blast like popping up every five seconds. Uh, and, and, you know, I he needs to get better. He needs to do shit better. He needs to get it's better. Wrong. That's what he's saying. Wrong. I, I really think... He, yeah, talking about it there. live on Twitch while sponsored, while or plugging your merch, while and scraping I, I, in the subscriptions. The uh, this did happen a year and a half ago. Uh, I think Slick has gotten a lot better, right? This ha uh, this happened a year ago, and it did get a lot better. Over the past few, the past year, um, but he still has so much work. Over the past him. year, Slick has gotten better, gotten better. He got over his uh, sexual assaulting issues, apparently. It got better. It can't happen, man. It can't happen. So, hey, his words not mine, okay? Um, and I, I said this a while ago, um, on Omegle when somebody asked me about on it. News. So 
just so you guys know, I'm not changing my story. I'm not pandering to what Train tweeted. This is something I... No more white hard oats. No, no more spam. It's not white hard oats. Try hard. No more try hard spam. No, no, you guys can do it for real now. The emotes. <laughs> Let me turn off. How do I turn it off? My overlay. <laughs> okay, wait. This is funny. Stop. Chat, chat, mo <laughs> chat moment. This is this is a real chat moment. Yeah, she's trying to turn off the widget, but chat is trolling her right now. This is kind of funny, honestly. It's a little cringe, but it's also kind of funny. Like the uh, chat, like cheering, cheering her up by dropping a bunch of goofy emotes. Chat moment, right? Let me turn off my overlay. Okay, enough, <laughs> enough. That was really funny, but no, enough, enough. Okay, so just so you guys know, I'm not changing my story because of what Train said. I'm not pandering. Oh, you're being fake, you're pandering. This is something that I filmed, I think, like a long time ago. Because when you have Omegle footage, you have hours of it. I have like two or three hours of Omegle footage. I have random conversations with people I'm never going to see again. Um, I have like, just like conversations with people. It's not anything public. It's just if someone asks about something, I'm going to tell the truth. All right, so here is this for you guys. Just so you guys know, I'm not changing my story, and then I'll answer questions. Uh, and then I have... So what she's showing right now, she is showing footage of, um... Oh no, she switched OBS scenes and the emotes came back. Um, but what she's showing is her talking about this before Train tweeted about it. The reason why this is important is because a lot of people were accusing her of just trying to clout shark because Train, uh, because Trainwrecks brought this up to Mizkif, and, and that's bullshit. So she's proving that it's bullshit by showing her talking about it before Train tweeted about it, okay? I have more things to say that I've been writing down, obviously, for a long time now. Um, and then I will answer questions. The news tab. I was about drunk and involving Slick. That's fucked up. I didn't even say anything about it. How, this, this never got that big. Yeah. To this like, day. You want to know the fucked up thing? Here's, here's my, my rant part two. <laughs> the most fucked up thing is I didn't want to bring it out because I knew I would get the short end of the stick bringing it out, especially with the Reddit coomers and whatever. So I just, you know, kept my distance. So what she's just said is, I'm sorry about the volume. This is on Adriana's side, not mine. But what Adriana said is, I didn't want to talk about it publicly because I knew that I would get the short end of the stick on social media. She said, especially with Reddit coomers and all of that shit. What she's saying is she didn't want to make a big scene about her being victimized because she would get harassed to hell. And as we all know, that happens every fucking time. Anytime anyone, anytime any woman or femme creator steps forward with allegations of abuse, no matter how rock solid they are, she will get harassed into the ground, okay? And we're gonna talk about that in the discussion segment in just a little bit, but I just wanted you to make sure you could hear what she's saying. Minding my business. And um, then some girl was like, this girl named Novaru. I don't know if you know her. Fuck Novaru. She, Novaru, maybe. She was like grasping at straws because her channel was starting to get irrelevant. And she wasn't involved in like the circle anymore. So she was like, I don't like Slick because she touched my friend. We weren't. So Novaru basically uh, 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 came forward with these allegations, which indeed is not a is not a good thing to do you don't want to come out on behalf of somebody else for exactly this reason but it happened friends she had me blocked on fucking twitter i don't even know why she had me blocked because she had beef with my other friend so uh she had me blocked on twitter she told my story saying oh he touched my friend while she was unconscious told that story and then it, it blows up on lsf everyone's like the girl needs to come out. Whoever the girl is needs to come out. So I'm like, what the hell? I woke up. I was trying to go to physical therapy that day. I got a bad back. And then I was like, fuck, I got to go to my friend. So I went to my friend who was the one who told me, because obviously I was unconscious, who the, was the one who told me that he was doing that. Because apparently there was like my group of friends who was like trying to protect me from him and kept telling him to stop and he just kept doing it. Um, so then I went over to his house and I was like, okay. So what she said here is she said, I didn't know I was passed out when this happened. One of my friends who was there and witnessed this happen, I went to that friend to talk to them about it and find out what I should do next. So 
uh, when she was when she was sexually assaulted, um, she was obvious. She was unconscious, and her friend was the one who witnessed it and told her about it. And then she w did not come forward about it because she was worried about the backlash that would happen. And then somebody else who was present, um, or, or or present and connected, then brought it forward, and she was forced into the situation. And that's where we're at right now. Yeah, she was unconscious. In fact, I'm gonna while we watch this, I'm gonna try and find the original twit longer. I for, I, I lost my link to the original twit longer, but I want to read the original uh, twit longer, just so we can uh, just so we can have that. Hey, let's write this twit longer because fuck Nova. I'm gonna go on on Nova. I'm gonna go on on Slick because fuck them. Like it sucks that I have to do this, but I have to because I right. was asking for the girl to come out. So I go right. upstairs. He he's in a meeting because he works from home. So he goes in his meeting. I go upstairs to my friend because my friend was at work. The girl because her boyfriend and girlfriend. Um, I start doing my makeup in her room. Okay, real quick. So this is the uh, this is the this is the this should be the original one, I believe. Yeah, by Adriana Lee. Let me just make sure this is the right account. Yes, this is the right account. This is Adriana Lee. This is the real Adriana Lee account. I, this is the, I'm just going to very quickly, I'm going to read the original twit longer. Uh, I thought that she would read it out at the beginning of this, but I guess she doesn't read it out until later. But let's, uh, let's read about this. This is Adriana Lee's twit longer. My experience with crazy slick. Again, content warning for sexual assault. Excuse me. I never thought I'd be making one of these, but here we are. I was the girl that Novaru was talking about in the clip on, li li on live stream fails. <clears throat> On January 19th, 2020, I went to Novaru's 21st birthday party, and because I went with some of my closest friends, I believed it would be safe for me to enjoy myself. I got very intoxicated and ended up blacking out. Leading to the rest of this story is what I've heard from multiple witnesses and how I feel about it. I was told that I was kissing my best friend, Enna, and another one of my close friends at the time, consensually. Crazy Slick was following us around and trying to kiss me, trying to kiss my friend, and at one point I was told that he and I did end up kissing. Then, apparently, I was passed out in one of the rooms at the party, and he came into the room while I was unconscious. He came into the room a couple of times before being asked to leave me alone each time. In two of those instances, he touched my neck and chest, saying he was just making sure I was alive. After being assured by my friends that I was okay since they were walking, walking over, watching over me, whether or not his intentions were genuine or not, I do not know. To be fair, he did not rape or assault me, but his actions did make me uncomfortable. Well, uh, I would argue this is absolutely... Uh, now, keep in mind, remember, remember, this is the statement that she was pressured to put out. It's very obvious by the actions this is indeed assault. This is the one that she was pressured to put out. And she has revised this. We're going to see the revision in this video, of course. All I can say is how I feel after the story. I woke up to the text of a friend I met that weekend. I'm very grateful to have my friends that kept me safe because I feel as if there's honestly no telling what would have happened if they weren't there. As someone who has been taken advantage of for my sexuality and for being drunk in the past, this reinforced a lot of trauma for me. Knowing that he found Ina and I making out was hot and tried to get something out of it is something that made me very uncomfortable. I can't clarify any facts or say what happened because I was blackout drunk and then unconscious. To clarify, me and Slick have never talked like that. He would say weird things in my chat and in my friend's chat and even try to get my friends to get me and him in a phone call together. As for Nova, she had me blocked before today for whatever reason. Nova had no right to air out my trauma on her stream and she wasn't even in the room to help me, let alone see what happened. I had to cancel all my plans today because of the stress this brought on me and being pressured to talk about something that I was not ready and very afraid to talk about. She unblocked me to tell me she talked about my story and my other close friend's story on stream and for what? It was not her place to talk about my story and my trauma on her live stream. Then basically asked me to come out because it because she looks bad. She replied to her own tweet acting like she was doing me a favor and airing this out. If she truly cared, she would have reached out to me before she went on stream to talk about it. That is true. I agree other girls should be aware of what happened, but it was not her place to do it for me. Nova brought out my story to justify her opinion on Slick on John Zerka's stream. Seeing as how often she is involved in drama, to me this felt like it was another way to try and stay relevant by virtue signaling and pretending that she is doing this for the greater good. This is the one that she was pressured by Maya and Mizkif to put out. One that explicitly claims 
that it was not sexual assault, even though what is described is sexual assault. It is sexual assault to repeatedly try to approach a person that clearly does not want you there, to repeatedly try to kiss them, to get them to kiss you while they are blackout drunk, and then when they pass out, to then go in multiple times while your friends are while her friends are trying to push you away and touch that person's body while they are unconscious. That is sexual assault. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So now we've we've read the original twit longer. I, I apologize. For some reason, I was under the impression she read this at the beginning, but but uh, but she didn't. So th now we've read it. Now everybody's on board with what the original statement said, and this is the full story here. Because she has a little like makeup room, and um, I hear Mitch, Barry, and Maya come in. I'm like, oh hell. No. Maya, Maya, who? Mrs. X. Maya Higa. Yeah, but they're dating. So I'm like, oh, fuck no. Like, I do not what want to deal fuck? with them. I okay. don't want to deal with them. I just want to write this to it longer and move on with my life. And so then um, at the time, I had a big Minecraft following. So I have all these young girls looking up to me, right? And and I really, like, stick up for these young girls because all what I've experienced, my biggest, like, trouble that I had that in that time was, like, I would go to these young girls' streams and they would just get, like, sexually harassed. Like, people say, like, show your tits. And they're, like, literally minors. So it's like, bro, no right. girl should have to feel like they're just playing Minecraft. Like, of course, right, right, right. I get it that there's hot tub streamers on the site, but like these young girls don't deserve that. But anyways, besides the point. And, and this is her just talking candidly about how much sexual harassment random gaming streamers who are women have to experience on this site. The sexual harassment problem is out of fucking control. Point. My point was, Maya was like, um, I just don't think- Oh shit, oh my up. god, I'm sorry, I'm the like, video. Are you fucking kidding sorry me? Sorry about that. I, or she Video's said I up. say something anonymously. Thank you. Or everyone was like, no, or or I should say, it wasn't that big of a deal and I'm over it now. And I was like, listen, I'm gonna be true to myself. I'll make Slick look good, like like an angel, because I did. In the tweet longer, if anybody ever bothered to read it, because a lot of people didn't. Um, I what she said right there is that she was pressured by Maya and Mizkif to make Slick look like an angel. Do you hear that? I make Slick look like an angel. I'm like, hey, it's whatever. This made me uncomfortable, but it's whatever. Even though I, I was upset with it. I just, you know, I came to a even point with Maya because Maya was like, we don't want to kick him out. So I was like, okay, whatever. Maya says, we don't want to kick him out. So you need to make him look like an angel. So then, uh, and then I mind you, and I express this. Oh, no. I expressed this when um, I was um, over there. I didn't want to be socially excluded. I expressed that. I said, hey, listen, I'll do whatever. Like, this is obviously I'm going to tell my side of the story, but I, I can, I'm able to come to an even point with you so you guys don't exclude me. Because knowing this, like, as a smaller streamer in Austin, these people have the power to isolate me. I say the fuck out of me. That right there, what you are, what you are hearing right there is one of the biggest things we're going to talk about when we finish our little investigation segment. Because that right there, these people, these people who are w m thousands of times larger, have the ability to isolate her, to destroy her career, to ruin her reputation, even though she didn't do anything wrong and she did comply with what they wanted because she was so afraid of the repercussions. And we know the repercussions are real because if you have streamers with hundreds of thousands of daily viewers who are telling a certain narrative, your reputation will be destroyed and you might not actually be able to recover your reputation, even if you have the truth on your side. And she said, okay, that's fine. And guess what happened anyways? Guess what fucking happened anyways. Hey, Adriana, but I see you at parties all the time. We'll get in to all of it in a little bit, okay? There's going to be more in this video, too, okay? I'm going to answer questions, too. I went on a Nova, whatever. And to this day, every time I hang out with a streamer, a bigger streamer on a website, on a platform, whatever, and they know the Ms. Kiff circle jerk, Anytime I hang out with a streamer and they know and are familiar with the Mizkiff circle jerk, he will go and message them 
whatever big streamer I'm with, a long paragraph on how they don't, she doesn't want them to be around me. Ms. Kiff will message them to say to a streamer that, that, that she doesn't, that they don't want people associating with Adriana Lee. Literally, literally blackballing someone because they have dirt on your friend who you make a lot of money with. Because it triggered him because he almost got kicked out. Really? But you know what the Reddit comments were saying to me? And saying, and I've actually experienced like real, like sexual, not saying it wasn't real sexual harassment, but I've experienced like real sexual assault in my life, you know, before right. like, Twitch or anything. And just the Reddit comments I was getting were absolutely absurd, bro. Like, it was like, Jesus Christ, like you guys are allowed to say this? Like, you're allowed to say these things to a woman about a woman? Um, Yes. So yeah, she's talking about getting the most unhinged Reddit comments you can possibly imagine, which by the way, I completely understand that. I have never had that many eyes on me, not even close, although I have provoked the ire of larger streamers, and you guys, I've shown on this stream some of the heinous shit people will say to me. And we're not talking jokes either. We're talking people who just come in and say that you deserve to die. Like, they're not joking at you, they're not making fun of you, they're threatening you and saying they want you to die over Twitch drama. What the? No, that's okay. And that's now, to this point, insane. I'm like shadow banned from that whole group. Like a lot of people are like chill with me. And the thing that sucks is like, I'm friends with these bigger streamers and they don't want, they, they still like, they know I'm right. Right. And they've reached out to me and like, are you okay? Whatever. But they, they can't be seen in public with me. They can't collaborate with me. because the They end can't of the day, be seen in public with me. They can't collaborate with me because they'll piss off the click of people who wanted to cover up the sexual assault. Holy fuck. If they do, guess what happens? Slick goes in and is like, I don't want you around her anymore. And Slick has the power to because Slick can cut him off from this miskiff circle jerk, which they all are like grasping to get in. You know what I mean? That's fucked up, dude. What the fuck? I didn't know that that whole situation was that like toxic. Yeah, it kind of sucks because... Crazy it's, Slick is a piece of shit. It's the one what thing the that really like made me contemplate like, unaliving because it's like i work so hard she's talking now about how it made her suicidal because she's worked so hard at her career and then something that was done to her uh just led to her being punished for stay for speaking out at all about something that was done to her like just seriously can we just take a moment and just recognize the precarious situation that basically anyone who's not uh, already a big streamer or or friends with these big streamers, the the, the, the situation you're in, if you, tr if you come into contact with these social groups, they will fuck you if you don't fall in line. And not only that, but they house and harbor people who will literally sexually assault you and then if you say that's wrong you will be punished for it no matter how hard you work no matter how talented you are no matter how much love you have from your community if one of these big guys gets mad at you they can just fuck you up oh so yeah and keep in mind she was 19 when this happened 19. I get where i am and like i'm from the trailer parks of michigan like i'm not from like i don't got like a rich family like i got kicked out when i was 17 and i worked really hard to get to where i am and to do what my dream job but now it's like things are just so hard for me because you know i came here for you people say well they're not your buddies well see that's the thing because what happens in situations like this is that uh uh there's there's webs of connection right so you have a group of really close friends like a team of people who who are all very popular streamers and they're all watching out for each other but then everybody who they're connected to who might be friends with you well they have to think about it too all of your friends who might who might be good people who really want to support you they know that their careers could be negatively impacted this is how this shit happens. You guys watch this shit on a smaller scale, on a much smaller scale, happen to me. You guys watch a big fucking streamer go ballistic and write fucking manifestos about me. Yeah, it turns out that you can't trust a lot of people in these spaces because of the power dynamics that are already in play. That you could find yourself highly isolated even from people who are your friends and who do want to help you, because those people might suffer repercussions.
Mind you, I work two real jobs now because I wasn't able to keep up with streaming. And let that be any factor. I talk about this all the time. How tons of fucking crazy, crazy talented women, women of color, trans women, leave these spaces and can never properly come back because they get fucking decked by some dickhead. By some fucking sexually assaulting dickhead. It could be any factor. I'm not saying it's only because of the slick situation. It could literally be any factor, okay? I'm not saying, but, but obviously this didn't help. And I'm sure I would be somewhere else with my career if this didn't happen. For opportunity, I was friends with, like, that group before I came here, you know? Right. Um, like, before I moved here, I, I used to visit a lot because I was friends with all these people. And now it's like, I'm just like a social outcast. Oh yeah, and notice what she's saying here, that before this happened, she was friends with all of these people. Before she was even a streamer, she already had friendships. And now she finds herself in a conundrum because she's in, she's become a part of this group of people and this group of people is pressuring her to be silent. This is a terrible situation to find yourself in. That's fuck. So you, he, he tried to do all that while you were like drunk, I'm assuming? Yeah, I was drunk and then I passed out because I drank too much. But I was like, it was like in an Airbnb, so I was just in a room. And then he kept like trying to come in, like feel my chest and like touch my boob. And my friend was like, "Yo, stop!" I was like, I'm just checking her pulse. He's like, "Dude, stop! You're not checking her pulse. Like you're obviously <laughs> checking her." That's that's sexual assault. That's that's like that's arguably rape. Like, yes, it all depends on the definitions you use. But somebody going in and grabbing your chest while you're unconscious—that's so fucked up. Her pulse grabbing her. Yeah. What the and fuck? Then, and then he would go away and he would come back and try to do it again. So my friends literally had to guard me. And uh, the craziest part is, it's not just like, oh, accusation. He admitted this. He admitted to doing this. Like, he put out his tweet longer after mine saying, oh, I'm so sorry, I drummed it. I, I was drunk, whatever. He did it. He admitted There you have it. He even fucking admitted to he admitted it. To doing it. It's not even just like, oh, that's a weird accusation that you did. I didn't even hear about this, to be honest at all. So pushed under the rug and it did it like ruined my life i'm not gonna lie to you that's fucked yeah well the miskiff circle jerk look go in the ludwig circle jerk or something i don't know miskiff circle jerk kind of sucks it's kind of trashy yeah that's why i just do my own thing these that's days. smart you're yeah. like 10k 20k and i've been It'll focusing be myself or focusing around other people that like are not in it and the thing is at the end of the day I'm not stupid. These people know. I feel like Nicki Minaj right now because she's like, these people came together to try to end me. No, but the thing is, these people know if I get big, that they're done for. You know what I mean? If I get big, obviously, as you try to search my name, guess what pops up? You know, the more I get big, the more Slick has a chance of getting kicked out or like removed from the scene. So every time, like, I told you I, I collaborated with Cypher PK recently. I didn't right. know he knew Cypher PK. He he weaseled his way in no to way. Cypher PK party. Because I collaborated with him. I didn't even know he lived in Austin. I collaborated with him. I got invited to like a dating show with them. A, lo a lover host? Kind of like that, but for his younger brother. And, okay. uh, you know, I did my thing because I've been on lover host before. I know how to do that. What I'm saying is he, and I talked to the person who organized this party, he found a way to insert himself into Cypher PK's party. So even after this happened, this motherfucker is hounding and trying to protect his reputation by squeezing his way into this, into this, into this woman's fucking social life. Constantly. You know what I mean? After he saw that I was, so obviously he's like trying to stop my bag intentionally. This time just like oh we we know the same people it's like he saw me that i was doing this so he went out of his way to go figure not to mention he would see who i was hanging out with on twitter girls guys girls he doesn't even talk to and invite them to where whatever like next ms house party that was happening so figure out a way to sabotage it you know what i mean or tr or attempt to or attempt to scare me like i'm not scared as i said i'm from detroit 
Yeah, yeah, you from yeah. I had I had an abusive cringe uh, reply. like household growing up. Like I got nothing to be scared of. I think I'm gonna be scared of some greasy guy. No. Some greasy guy, fucking. <laughs> that's fucked up, dude. I didn't even. That's insane. No. That actually. Detroit buff. Okay, but anyways. To sum it up for y'all, all right. I've had my notes. My career was stunted because I was reaching personal record views before this whole thing happened, which is like, oh, it could be any situation, but it's just a little funny how I was doing very good before this whole situation happened, obviously. When I was told, it's okay, just come out about it so we don't have to kick Slick out. We'll, we'll come to a, a, a middle ground so we don't have to kick Slick out. Real quick, we'll be... real quick. Uh, the one thing, one thing I wasn't able to find was the, the Slick the crazy slick twit longer. If anybody here who's listening has access to the crazy slick twit longer, I would like to see that because I think it would, uh, I think it would fucking set, settle a couple of uh, of the detractors in this uh, in this conversation. Fine, you'll be fine. Thank you for the tier one, Grim, um, and Apple Orchard. But you know, things things kept going, and then people are afraid to be around me. A lot of people who I've been friends with who are bigger streamers are obviously afraid to be around me because as I said in that video, I did a stream with a, I'm not gonna even name names, but they know who they are, okay? You might, you might be able to dig, dig. It's not that fucking hard to find. I did a stream where I drank with three of my friends, okay? Three of them. And it was a grand old happy time. Great stream, good content, funny was a couple clips on LSF. Come to find out that later that night, Slick messages a paragraph to both of my friends who I streamed with. Who knows about the third one? I was confirmed two of them. Don't know about the third one. Saying, why are you around Adriana Lee? To both of my friends. Funny. Three of my friends. They know friends. Okay? Three of them. Second. And it was a grand old happy time. Great stream, good content, funny. Was a couple clips on LSF. Come to find out that later that night, Slick messages a paragraph to both of my friends who I streamed with. Who Holy shit. N not only is this disgusting behavior, but it's also fucking stupid. Can you imagine, like, approaching someone's personal friends to try and get them to distance? This is a- this is a sexual- this is a fucking sex pest trying to ruin the life of one of his victims. Holy fuck, this is some fucking, uh, uh, Harvey Weinstein shit. Straight up! Who knows about the third one? I was confirmed two of them. Don't know about the third one. Saying, why are you around Adriana Lee? She triggers me. Okay. She triggers me. Please don't hang around her. Also, this guy is weaponizing. This is this guy is weaponizing like uh, like social justice language. Oh, uh, uh, mental health language. Oh, I'm triggered by the fact that you're hanging out with somebody who has dirt on me. I'm very triggered by that. Literally, that is just the most uh, uh, the most hollowed out, soulless. Uh, 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 misappropriation of mental health language. Holy shit. We just keep running into that lately. People just weaponize this language. They adapt. They learn new words. When I was just trying to collaborate with some of my friends who happened to be bigger streamers than me. And guess what? I did not see one of those people because one of those people works for OTK. I have oh never God. hung out with him since. Holy shit. And listen, hey, it's not his so the only one of the friends who stopped who stopped hanging out with her was the one who happens to work for that team. That is so fucked up. Hold on one second, I want to look at these real quick. Okay, we're gonna keep listening to this while his I look fault. through this thread. It literally is not his fault. I don't want to stop his bag. I don't want to be the reason that he gets fired or the reason that he can't make money. Do your thing. Like, I, I, if I, as a friend or as someone who does care about people's well-being, yeah, do your thing. It fucking sucks. 
that I'm this hush hush word, this hush hush situation. Nobody can be my friend or be around me without Slick having something to say about it. Whatever. Okay. Um, and a lot of people who are saying Adriana Lee drama whore, whatever, didn't even care to read the tweet longer. I'm gonna just read it out loud for you. Oh, okay. So here's the response. This is a deleted tweet, apparently. Here is Slick's response to the situation. Uh, the, the tweet, I assume the tweet has been deleted because I was unable to find it recently. This was his response, apparently earlier this, uh, just a couple of days ago. I have never sexually assaulted anyone. I never will. I have never had any intentions of ever harming anyone. I go out of my way to check on someone and I get accused of rape. This is unfair. I will be getting a lawyer ASAP. Learn from the Johnny Depp situation and think first. And this is XQC drama, drama farming off of it, apparently. Here's another clip of Miz admitting it. Wild. Let's keep listening. We all again, because a lot of people are like, she said this. <laughs> it's like, take us, take a break, take a breather and go read the fucking tweet longer yourself. Because nobody read it, apparently. Nobody fucking read it, apparently. Okay, and then, oh yeah, a lot of people don't want to be at risk with me. Um, like a lot of people, there's a clip, there's also a clip, I didn't really get to find it before I came on the stream, it was kind of last minute, where um, I was going to get invited to something but then wasn't because was reminded that I'm not allowed to be around these big people. Kinsey actually maybe could find the clip she clipped it so let's see if she can find it okay then um slick going out his way to scare me or intimidate me as i said the cypher pk thing love him that's bestie you know very good guy very good. wait asmund gold said he hoped slick would die after he read that holy shit and can you give me a clip of that that'd be great to get to that party wasn't invited didn't even say hi to cypher pk while he was there found a way it, it, so I was I was hanging out with this exclusive group of girls one time and just going to the bars with them. Randomly, doesn't even talk to these girls, isn't even friends with these girls. Text them, want to come to Ms. Kiff party? What are they gonna say? Of course they're gonna say yes, because this is networking that helps everyone's career. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. Okay. Um, and I know he's gonna say something about this, so we're gonna say it right now. I did go up to him at a party we were both at in October, a couple months after it said, I said, listen, because I heard that he was t talking mad shit about me. He would just not stop spreading rumors or rumors that I sleep with people in Austin. I have not slept with a single fucking streamer in Austin. Okay, yeah, maybe Hinkle. Oh, what about Hinkle? LA. I had a boyfriend that was in Long Island, New York, small VTuber. I have. Isn't it, isn't it just, I know that like, like, I just want to say it's fucked up that this is what has to happen every single time. Anybody even so much as mentions that they might have been harmed by somebody else, that, th that this culture demands that she list out all of her partners through all of history to prove she's not a slut. Isn't that fucked up? We, time really hasn't fucking, we really haven't made that much progress, have we? It's fucking exactly the same. They just literally, uh, somebody fucking sexually assaults you and then somebody else out, uh, you know, brings it forward and then you're forced to deal with it and then everybody stalks you, cuts you off from everybody else and then call you, calls you a slut. Holy fuck, this shit is so fucked up. This shit is so fucked up. God, Twitch is so fucked. It's so fucked. There's no hope for this place. God, um, some guy in Ohio, that played Fortnite. I have never slept with a single fucking streamer in Austin. And that is a rumor that's going around because you know why? You know why all these rumors went Good around? Man. Good to see you. Because people know their fucking friend fucked up. Okay? People know their friend fucked up, but they want to give a reason to why I fucking deserved it. They want to twist yes, things around. Do. So it's like, oh yeah, yep. he did that, but she's a bitch. Oh yeah, he did that, but, 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 but she's a whore. Like, people want to spin 
as much as I can. She is spitting so much fucking truth right now. It's unbelievable. To give Every a reason why time. Adriana Lee deserved that. When everyone knows I was fucking asleep. How the fuck does any girl take accountability? Take accountability for your mistakes. What the fuck did I do? I fucking fell asleep. And he, he wants to go around. Well, she tried to apologize to me at a party. She, she go, he goes up to my fucking friends. My fucking friends. Oh, oh, like you're Adriana's friend. Well, guess what? She apologized to me at a party. Slick, if you're watching this, where the fuck did I apologize for? What the fuck did I apologize for? I would love for you to fucking tell me. I probably said, hey, sorry this is all happening. This is very stressful. Mind not talking shit about me? Are we on the same page? Fuck Novaru. We hate Novaru. Please stop fucking talking shit about me. Yes, I, I said that to him because I would like to stop being fucking shit talked. Stop being fucking excluded. Stop being, have my friends, my best friends for fucking years turn on me because they're tired of not being invited to things because they're friends with me? People I've literally known for years. And, like, we're super close with. Have turned on me and tried to come up with some random reason to not like me. Because they're mad that they can't get in the, the circle jerk. They can't get in the Mizkif circle jerk. Their careers are also taking a toll and it's not fair to them that their careers are taking a toll for something that happened to me when I was sleeping. Something I didn't even want to fucking say. Something Novaru fucking came out about. If you're, if you're watching this, no, well, literally fuck you. Like, literally, what is the point? What is the point? Still never got an apology from her. Crazy. Actually crazy. This is why people behave like this. Okay. Because the co-founder of, of OTK, the team that we've been talking about this entire time, gets 30,000 people in his chat that are throwing money at him all day long. Peak viewers in the last month, 73,000 people. Boy, that's a lot of money and all the sponsorships. And, you know, he's a co-founder of the team. Interesting. I went all, and you heard him. He said it himself. Mizkiff said it himself that he was going to go all in in defending his. Fr and, you know, he's like, "Oh, I, I don't want to. I don't want to fire my friend, my best friend, my best buddy." Let's continue because I have more. Okay. Another reason, um, a crazy thing that happened. Um, is just like, obviously I said, like my friends that I was drinking with the PK situation, I was hanging out with John Zerka. Um, I love, I have really a lot of love for John Zerka, good content creator, whatever. I've known him for a very long time. Um, and he said, he like knew about the situation. He said, listen, like I said, listen, I'm not going to stop you. Go to the parties, whatever. Um, just know like, this is how I feel about it. It's something that has hurt me and it is hurting me. He goes, don't worry, Adri, like you've been there for me since the beginning. Like we're like twin, like you're the one picking, he said it directly. You're the one picking me up from the airport right now. I'm not gonna go and, and, and turn on you and be fake. And obviously I was posting that I was hanging out with Zerka. So either Slick, hey Zerka, let's take a picture or Zerka, whatever, takes a picture of the party. Slick's day one, blah, 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 blah. It's like, damn, like it's whatever, but it just makes me wonder like what's being said behind the scenes. What's being said behind the scenes for people to assume that oh, I'm you a got whore. The clip? Somebody's got the clip there. You've got it just up. Uh... As I said, I don't sleep with streamers in Austin. Could be able to post it here. If not, if you can't post a I, link in shit, YouTube I don't even chat, get just come like by whatever. the site chat. I'm not going to lie to com. Okay. By the way, it's been a long time. Now you know what? I'll wait till the end of this. Um, people are saying like all these rumors about me. It's actually insane. Um, thanks. Um, the universal problem here is that many girls have had obviously bad experiences with 
slick, okay? Um, but the main thing is, let me make this clear, okay? I'm not trying to hit out on slick. I'm not trying to, I'm trying to fuck up his life more, okay? I'm not trying to do that. If this was handled correctly in the first place, everyone fucking sunshines and rainbows. Although I am still, like, obviously allowed to be and valid to be upset about me being touched when I'm asleep, what pisses me off the most is the way it was treated afterwards. In the way it was so pushed onto the rug. In the way that I'm, as I said, being silenced and my career is being pushed down. I've talked to lawyers about this situation. Because as I said, I work too fucking hard to get to where I am. Thank you, Junkie Junkman. I work too fucking hard to get to where I am. Coming from fucking nothing. For somebody who hasn't had a fucking job in their motherfucking life. Never filled out a fucking W-2 who's living in a mansion crying. I'm so sad that these rumors are being spread about me. While he's crying in his fucking mansion. Meanwhile, I had to get two fucking jobs just to pay my fucking rent. I've had to do things that I don't want to do that might possibly hurt my fucking reputation to pay my fucking rent. Well, <laughs> cries in his fucking mansion. It's so fucking tone deaf. You don't realize how fucking privileged you are. Anyways. I'm going to bring up some screenshots now and some, because obviously I've been talking for a while, so I feel like it's time to, oh, where's the proof, blah, blah, blah. Okay, don't worry, y'all. I know y'all are going to say, I've, I've read all the comments on Reddit, okay? I asked Britt if she was comfortable sharing her story, because she told me this in a Discord a while ago, and I wasn't going to tell anybody, but today I reached out, I said, hey, are you comfortable sharing this story with me? So basically what she told me on Discord, and I have proof of here, okay, is that one day, she's, she loves Poggers community, okay? She, she loves Poggers community, everything about it. So one day, Slick reaches out to her. What's your snap? And she gives him her snap. He then messaged her saying, I'm jacking off right now. Or like, something horny. I just remember something to do with jacking off. And she did not reply. She doesn't have screenshots. But she didn't entertain the message. So he immediately blocked her. And mind you, this event happened after he was exposed for being creepy. You would think someone would learn. You'd think, oh, we promised Slick is going to change for the better. Would be a thing. And this happened. Let's take a minute. Honestly, I don't mind if my name is on it, as long as I'm not the only one. He was very gross to me, but it was over Snap, so I don't have any screenshots. Once I didn't entertain his sexual messages one night, he totally blocked me on Snapchat the next morning. I said, thank you for sharing. I'm currently trying to talk to another girl about her story. Obviously, I need... I need... Um, proof... And I need confirmation to share because I don't want what happened to me because of Novaru to happen to all, any of these girls. And is the reason why I didn't pull stories in the first place because I knew. Um, because as I shared when the story first came out, he also has done something fucked up to my best friend at the time. We're no longer friends. Um, but obviously, that's something I said back then. Um, I'm not in contact with her anymore. By the way, this is another thing. You'll notice this happened with Me Too as well. That basically the only way that any even, that any sense of, of, of justice or fairness or recompense is ever made for any of the victims of these people is when, or, or yeah, yeah, for any of the victims of these people is when all the victims get together and stand together. And that is the only time. And even then, usually it's nothing permanent. It just means that the victims can get together and stand strong together and pr and protect each other from the unbelievable waves of harassment that come come flooding in. And you'll notice that um, that uh, they'll be labeled as like a haters club. 
This is something that happens all the time. Uh, a bunch of victims of a specific person get together and they say, hey, we need to protect each other because we're all being harassed by this person's insane fan base. We're all being harassed by this person's insane friends. We're all being uh, uh, cut out of the industry. We're all being forced out. And then it's just like, oh, it's just a haters club. They're a bunch of witches who are mad. Oh, every fucking time. So I can't share the details of that story. I also have this. <clears throat> um, crazy slick in my best friend I'm Girly TV's chat because I'm a mod here. Yo, you didn't follow me yet. Kind of weird. Wait, I feel like he says I'm gonna meet you soon. Um, we could have dated. Shaking my head. Another time. Peace. Have a good stream. Which is like whatever. He's just being weird. Um, that's fucking weird. And then he says, and Can then you he follow says, me? I'll follow back. And then ha -ha. he says his, his supposedly says his dick length. <laughs> she didn't even read that one. Who the fuck is crazy slick? Crazy slick is a, a, a big streamer and a member of OTK. And, uh, according to Ms. Kiff, the co-founder of the stream team, the massive, massive stream team, OTK, he is Ms. Kiff's best friend. Uh, Crazy Slick is uh, alleged by multiple people of sexually assaulting the person who we see on the screen here, a woman by the name of Adriana Lee. Adriana Lee was 19 at the time uh, and drank too much and passed out, and Slick uh, touched her while she was unconscious. Let's continue. Locked, okay. You don't follow me yet, by the way. Kind of weird. Okay, awkward. I don't know. True, you did. Now, can we mount? If anybody knows what mounting is, what is mounting? Everybody knows what that means. To climb a female for... What the fuck does this mean? Comp Not someone gifting. Shut up. Anyways, thanks for the gifted sub. <laughs> but after she followed him on Twitter. Okay. Um, just some more sexual things. There's probably a lot of streamers, and now that I've come out about this again and I have other proof of girls having this experience are gonna come out. I I urge you, if you are a female streamer, to check your chat logs for Crazy Slick and tell me what you find. Um, there's also a chat log, I think, in mine where he says, I made Katarino. I can make you too. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, God. That's so gross and so cringe. Which is, I guess it's not, like, creepy, but it's just kind of like, bro. Oh, it's beyond, beyond um, that, JFK Jr. It's beyond. Yeah, this is all, this is all, like, straight out of Weinstein's playbook, by the way. And I'm going to find this. Hold on. I said, I was going to Austin. He said, okay, where are you going to sleep? I'm looking. I made one of the biggest girl streamers. Girl Twitch streamers. I got you. I just host people to make them big in my logs if the if the um i can't get a good screenshot of it right now but if the mods could and send it to me really fast i'll show you guys um also uh let me find this give me a second cringe unbelievable cringe I would be too, Yak Daddy. Yeah, of course they are. Yeah, of course they, are. Me, yeah, of course um, they they're, they're worried that if she gets any attention, they wouldn't be able to keep covering it up. Fast. They successfully covered it up for a year by directly intimidating her, and it still okay. failed. It still got out because this dude's a danger. <laughs> because this fucking do do guy has not just 
not not just did he hurt Adriana Lee, but he's hurt other people, clearly. This guy's a fucking menace. Do you drink? I was 19 at the time. Uh, you're crazy, whatever. Um, here's my snap. Sounds like a good idea. I'll add you. Are you ever going to come to Texas? Yes, I want to move there when I get partnered. When you move there, we can hang. Hee hee. Are you here yet? I want to hang. Buy my plane ticket. Hmm. If I'll do, if I do, are you down to hang? Yeah. Where are you going to sleep? I said, on the fridge. Damn. What the hell? You might get cold. No, it's hella comfy. Shit. I see you. I guess I got the bed to myself. GG. Want to sleep in my bed, idiot? SMH. Hi. Have a good Christmas. You have my snap. Yeah. He, he obviously removed me from snap. We didn't really talk on snap. Thank you for the 5,000 bits. Um, new one arriving on Friday. You kissed me, by the way. I didn't reply. And then this is after I, we talked at the party. Are we good? Yeah, we're okay. Can we get this removed? Yeah, that's fine. Same to you. Thank you. Hope you've been doing all right. This is after he tweeted. Uh, just, I'm just being transparent because these are going to be leaked either way. Whether I leak them, whether he leaks them. He's going to say, look, I have... She is correct that, yes, uh, the DMs will be Leverage on her because she said this, and I explained to you why. I wanted... Oh, you only, you only talked to him because you wanted people to stop shit-talking shit you. Of fucking course that's why I fucking talked to him. Of fucking course. Yeah, just notice, notice how many times, notice how she attempted to de-escalate. She basically attempted to let this thing die out, but because she wasn't willing to completely never speak about it again, to go into humbled silence and be destroyed, because she wasn't okay with that, it wasn't enough. So they kept pushing her, even though, and now they're saying that makes her guilty. Even though she's very clear about this and she has evidence that she was pressured, they're just gonna keep saying, oh, look, she's a liar, you can't trust her after we pressured her and she, and she, we, after we pressured her to say it wasn't as bad and then she said it wasn't as bad because she was convinced that that would get us off her case and we weren't off her case because we were concerned that if she still had a presence at all, it would come back to bite us. They would not accept anything but destroying her. That literally, it literally clicks. It literally makes sense. Hey, I heard you're spreading rumors about me. Is it okay if you stop doing that? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 fine, blah, 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 blah. Okay, cool. Are we good? Yeah, we're okay. A lot, Demon Speaker. And this then want to get this article one. moved? Yeah, sure, that's fine. Same to you. Thank you. Hope you've been doing all right. And I didn't reply because at this point I was pissed because this is after he... If you're just coming in, I apologize. I'm sure this is very confusing. We've been going for a very long time. This is a very deep and very convoluted situation, but nonetheless, quite important. And we have a little more to talk about uh, uh, after we watch uh, some more of this video. Um, but uh, 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 yeah, uh, that we, if, you, if you're just coming in, I recommend rewinding the VOD and watching from the beginning so all of this can make sense. Because it is indeed very convoluted. It is indeed very fucked up, okay? Also, if you are here and you've been enjoying this uh, sort of drama summary explanation, uh, the drama mama, please press like and please do subscribe. I would love to have you come back. Uh, I would love to hang out with you and have you be one of my lovely, lovely imps. Uh, we, uh, we do drama stuff every once in a great while. Usually I do these highly researched drama crawl throughs where I explain what happens, uh, and don't really try to like explicitly, uh, take sides, but we do an investigation first. And then afterwards I state my opinion and I usually take sides, quote unquote, when I state my opinion after we do the investigation. But yeah, uh, just for those of you who, uh, who, um, are just coming in now. Okay. Hi, I just came in. Oh my god, what did Vosh do to DM? That's horrible. Oh, Vosh didn't do anything to me. I don't know what you're talking about. Tweeted out the whole, I'm so depressed because people were spreading rumors about me. It's not fucking rumors. You literally admitted it yourself. What is this? People, people are spreading rumors about me. Then what is this? Oh, it's the crazy that. thing. The craziest wait, 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 thing wait. is... This is the deleted twit longer. This is the deleted twit longer I couldn't find. Thank goodness. Thank goodness she has it archived. Thank you, Andy. 
You're trying to move on, move on, it's old. I wish I could move on! So wait, hold on, wait, I can go back and we can look at this. This thing on, is- Let's see, hold on. I'll read it off. This is the statement from Cl Crazy Slick, which is now deleted. Slick says, I'm sorry. I'm incredibly sorry for making Adriana feel uncomfortable at a party a year ago and very sorry to her friends that night for having to put up with me. I was drunk and anxious and my intentions were to check her pulse, quote unquote, because I was worried. I realized that it was overstepping and I should have let her friends take care of her. There's no excuse for my behavior and I hope that she can forgive my actions. I'm also deeply sorry for anyone else I've ever made uncomfortable, whether it be on stream, at a party, or anywhere else. It's never been my intention to make people feel uncomfortable. So he admits that he did the things. He doesn't characterize them the same way because of course he doesn't. And also keep in mind that he doesn't deny at all the fact that he tried multiple times. This isn't just one thing. He wasn't just making someone uncomfortable. He was trying again and again and again throughout the night and there were multiple witnesses of this. Holy fuck. Thank you, Andy. So again, he admitted this happened and now he's gone back on it and, and his entire crew is trying to hide this shit. You're trying to move on, move on, it's old. I wish I could move on! Thank you for the sub, Zemo. I'm literally, I can pull people in to a Discord call right now to tell you that I am not just being crazy drama whore you're a crazy drama whore in this situation this has actually been affecting me for a long fucking time it's ruined my friendships it's fucked me over because twitch is fucking high school as we can tell from this week of, of all the fucking drama on twitter it's fucking high school Lenoira says, and Train brought this stuff back up and came out in Adriana's favor because he was pissed at Mizkif yes, more or less Yes, that's essentially what happened. Uh, Train and Mizkif were beefing, and Train brought the shit back up on and came out on Adriana's side, although the amount of support I'm not 100% sure about. But yes, that's the basic story. Yep. That's how we got here. I know, it's convoluted. Let me see what it's else. I up. grabbed a couple of screenshots before I went live when I was doing my makeup because there was a lot of things happening. Um... um Striped Kidder says, do I need to go back to the beginning of stream or is there a point where I should begin? Uh, we started talking about this like about an hour and 10 to to an hour and 15 minutes into the stream, I believe. So if you go back about an hour and 10 to hour and 15 minutes, you should see the beginning of this. <sighs> the craziest part oh, is- okay, Nuts, Nuts says Train got consent for bringing it up. Okay, well that's respectable at least. <laughs> <clears throat> Sienna May did not admit to touching her ex-boyfriend. She said, I didn't do that. But still, people hate Sienna May for touching um, her ex-boyfriend when he was sleeping. But everyone forgives Slick for doing it. For touching a girl. Not even an ex? No. Someone he didn't fucking know. Oh yeah, keep in mind, just to, re just to reassert for her, she stated multiple times that she had already turned down Crazy Slick. Crazy Slick had already been trying to kiss her earlier on in the night and she already turned him down multiple times. Out of part. Well, Adrian, you were like drunk. Like, like, this is a lot of comments I see. Like, these streamers don't know how parties work. We get drunk, we make mistakes. It's not a mistake to get drunk and have somebody force themselves on you. You know what happens when you get drunk? Your buddy, you, you fall asleep in bed. Your buddies put you in bed, like what happened. You know what's not supposed to happen when you get drunk? Some fucking weirdo comes and touches you while you're sleeping. That's fucked up. That's really, really fucked up. Getting drunk and making mistakes, okay, whatever that means to you, it's a lot different than touching a girl who's dead ass unconscious. She's sleep. Resident sleeper. Sleep. Sound asleep, honk shoe, honk shoe. Okay? I I don't know how much clearer I can get with that. This whole drama and has we made even me have so sad. Yeah, me too. Hassan yeah, me pandering. Too. Wait, wait, yeah, yeah, me too. And and I want to hear. I want you guys to hear something. This is this is this this is the space. 
This is the industry that I am in. This is the industry that you are all currently feasting your eyes on. This is the heinous shit. Now it is a lot worse over at Twitch right now because Twitch has all these little stream teams raking in all this money and sitting at the top and controlling all of these social spaces. And that's not, well, that happens on YouTube, but it's a little different there right now because streaming on YouTube is really new. I have no doubts this sort of shit is gonna happen as well. But as it stands right now, Twitch is like this because there's a handful of people who are all interconnected up at the top of Twitch and a handful of them have beef, and so there are these little clicks battling it out. From, oh, oh, well, like, we don't know. Like, I think he says something like, oh, we don't know. It's like 25 fucking minutes long, but he's like, he's like, well, it, it, we don't know, guys. We don't know. Bro, yes, you oh, do. Yeah. Just say you don't want to. By the way, just so we know, after, just so you all know, after this, Hassan did interview Adriana Lee, and as I understand it, they came to a better conclusion than this. I haven't seen the whole interview myself, but they did talk after this fact. So while Hassan was very cautious at first, he did end up having Adriana Lee on to tell her story. So credit where credit is due to Hassan for that. Ruin your friendship with Ms. Kiff. Just so you don't want to say something Ms. Kiff might not like. Oh no, Matt, he's not gonna like it. I can't say that. I can't say that. Okay, we got it. We get it, okay? I have people that I ride or die for. Don't get me wrong. But goddamn, some people are stupid. Not saying he's not stupid, but the people who follow him, like, yeah! Yeah! It's, it's Adriana's fault for falling asleep! And then, let's find this, um... Thing that I retweeted. So, what as many a, of you what know, is, what is a Mizkif? Mizkif is a streamer, the one we've been talking about this entire time, the co-founder of OTK, one of the biggest stream teams on Twitch, if not the biggest stream team, one of the biggest streamers on Twitch. Guy making a lot of fucking money off all this. That's who we've been talking about. If you watch, if you read the, if you haven't read the tweet longer yet, I really advise you to go read it. You know what? Do, would you like to read it together? Do we want to read it together? Because a lot of people are like, what is this accusation? But I want to make it clear, this text right here. Thank you, Anonymous. You survived. You feeling okay? I'm still drunk. I can see that. Where did you wake up? At my Airbnb. Oh, shit, really? You were passed the fuck on, out on the bed. We were guarding you from that one dude who was, like, stalking you and Enna. Black Justin Bieber here, hair. He kept trying to touch you when you were passed out to see if you were alive. That is the same person who wrote the twit longer with me, because mind you, how the fuck am I going to write a twit longer when I was fucking asleep? How am I going to tell the story when I was fucking asleep? Okay? How? Okay? So that same person said this, admitted to this, okay? So Train said, are you going to send Maya and Mitch to railroad and blackmail me like you did those girls to cover up those sexual assaults, you fucking scumbag piece of shit, you want to come at me, make shit up, then you better, sure, you don't live in the glass house, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the people involved know the truth, for those who are farming, uh, whatever, whatever. My friend Kyle says, facts, I was in the room when it happened. Later, they came over to try to figure out how to resolve the situation, assured us actions would be taken. But it ended up being downplayed to what was agreed upon. They even had us let them approve tweets. Girls sent out about the situation. Listen to that. They even had us let them approve the tweets that the girls then would say about the situation. That is wielding your power as a more influential streamer, as one of the leaders of a major streaming group to silence accusations of sexual assault from multiple witnesses. So Maya had approved my tweet. So okay. sus. It is, it is beyond sus. We've left the sus atmosphere. We've entered into the sickening Harvey Weinstein universe. Not to mention, I was told, I don't know if the person who said this to me wants it to be public of who said it to me, but I was told that Ms. sent the most credible, nicest girl on Twitch to talk to me instead of him going over there because it would look better. Who did the fucked up shit? Well, a lot of people did fucked up shit, but the person who did the sexual, who allegedly did the sexual assault was a guy named Crazy Slick. 
Now, he admitted to doing something. He did not call it sexual assault, but from multiple witnesses and his own admission that he did do something, it does appear that he committed sexual assault. He was then covered for by his teammates on the OTK stream team. Uh, uh, Ms. Kiff is the co-founder who has gone the hardest to cover for Crazy Slick, going so far as to pressure the victims into silence. It would look better. It'd be better to convince me not to, not to get Slick kicked out. Hmm. Like, bro, what the fuck? And at first it's like, oh, everything's gonna be normal. It's gonna be fine. Like, we're, 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 we're friends. Like, it's okay. Like, you're going to be invited to parties still. You're not going to be socially outcasted. And you know what's funny? Maya invited me to her little animal sanctuary volunteer thing. I love animals. I have a bird over there. I had another bird. I, I love birds, okay? I fucking love birds, all right? My emote, the little high little bird. The bird. My bird. Bro Broby. Okay? I said, oh, yeah, I would love to volunteer. Slick was in there. Yeah, that who's the top dogs at OTK? The top dogs at OTK, I believe the two founders were Asmund Gold and Mizkif. Uh though I I actually think I have to check this because there's been some updates uh in recent memory, but we'll we'll get there. I'm not sure. Actually, I have not heard those names mentioned, Louie Boy. That's probably yeah. In the in the Discord, I didn't care. I was like, whatever. If he's gonna volunteer for animals, like I don't fucking care. Asma, Asma, Meanwhile, Asma Gold is the owner. To find, yeah. when I find out people were actually going to the same Yeah, but uh, yeah, Asmund Gold doesn't live with them in the stream house. In the streamer house, it's a different group of people, but yes. Sanctuary to do work. I was like, oh cool, like let me check the Discord. Like, I'll see what days I'm available. I would love to help out. I'm removed from the Discord. Like months after the whole slick situation settled, he, she doesn't have to look good anymore. I'm removed from the Discord. So I was like, okay, whatever. Like, it, it, I'm just not gonna think too much about it. It's whatever. Every single time I see her in a public venue, she stares me down. And sometimes I think, it's not the big deal. And I, I've actually think recently, I'm gonna walk up to her and say, hey, is everything okay with us? Because I, I'm so confused. By the way. And it's like, oh, well, you're just, you're just so being biased. I'm just biased. gonna pause like, this real quick. OTK, sponsored by Mountain Dew Gamer Fuel, by Mountain Dew, and by Razor. You see why this, uh, you see why this gets really messy really fucking fast? You see that? She's not actually staring at you, you're just, you just have that thought in your mind. I've had people who don't even know who she is saying, hey, who's that girl with the brown and short hair that's staring at you from across the room? I'm like, dude, say something. Like, wh what is wrong? What's wrong? I'll get Kinsey, Kinsey, call me on Discord. Just so I can have, because right now, obviously, we can take away from this. Not Give me five. Girl. Um, and not to mention, we were all out on 6th Street. It was just a normal time. We are all having fun. Listen, oh, I'm Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the thing we have to talk about at the end, but we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Advocate for everyone having fun, okay? As long as obviously things aren't, we'll talk about no one's the, being touched on their unconscious so far, and no one's being taken advantage of. Whatever. We're on Sixth Street, and Miz is there, and I'm like, "Oh, hey, Miz! Like, good to meet you again." Like, I try to like literally just clear. I Minx. the air. Minx was there. He runs away. He runs away playful like this. He runs like. Oh my God, get away from me. You tried to cancel my best friend. Oh no, get away from me. You tried to cancel my best friend. Repeatedly running around saying that. And I was like, so cringe. bro. We heard it. We heard him saying that in the wow, in the wow stream. Remember? He was like, oh yeah, I feel bad. He got canceled. Oh, were you not there? The person who told me to put something out? Like, what is it? Like, I was like, obviously drinking so it's like why is this getting thrown in my face when i'm just trying to have a good time with my friends it was goofy af all the people yes it was goofy like bro what the fuck grow up let's see and obviously Killjoy says, didn't YouTube go through this phase in 
in 2010, 2015, where popular streamers were getting clapped by allegations all the time and covering for each other. This happens anywhere. This is what happens when powerful people protect their friends. Powerful Power protects power, even on small scales. And uh, keep in mind, this isn't even that small of a scale since we're talking about people who are making millions of dollars. We're talking of millions and millions of dollars here. Fucking sponsored by some of the biggest brands in the country. It's called, yeah, it is. Nuts is right. It's fucking rape culture. This is what rape culture is all about. This is why this constantly happens. It's because th there are fundamental problems in our culture with the way women are treated, with the way we talk about consent, with the way we treat other people that have not been addressed. True, Galley. Train is one of the people who reached out to me after the situation, literally right after the situation. Oh, well, well, he's known about this for so long. Why didn't he say anything? He has been, like, reaching out to me every time something comes up about it. Is everything okay? Are you all right? Um, hold on. Credit to train here. Is everything okay? Are you all right? Whatever. He's been, um... Reaching out to me. Hold on. I have not. I don't know why Minx is saying, laughing at me and saying I'm not the best option to trust. Typical. Typical everyone who's going to say, oh, you're pulse. untrustworthy because of X, because of X. Let's call Kyle, the person who is there. Okay. So we've already heard Kyle's thing. This is just Kyle getting on here. This is where we are going to move into the next phase of this thing. But there's one last, actually, sorry, I'm wrong. There's one last thing, okay? All right, which is this, okay? As of, let me just make sure I got the date on here correctly. Uh, yeah, as of a, just a couple of days ago, uh, Ms. Kiff has been put on leave from OTK. Now, there is still an ongoing and pending investigation, but as of right now, the latest development in this story is that Ms. Kiff is currently under investigation by the company he helped co-found, but he's on leave. Now, if that sounds a bit like a cop-out, that's because it is. Uh, this should be a much bigger deal. The fact that a founding member of a team uh, uh, was it now has been repeatedly and credibly uh, uh, um, revealed to have pressured a victim of sexual assault, to have uh, utilized the clout and the connections from the team itself. Uh, yeah, this is bad news for this team. But, you know, they put him on leave. Just like with Blizzard, someone had to, uh, had to, had to, well, in your case, yeah, in Blizzard, someone ended up killing themselves. But in this particular case, that is not what happened, despite incredible damage being done to lots of people. Isn't this just the standard cops invest investigating cops tactics? Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. Weird how that works, right? Like I said, powerful, pr the power protecting power. Isn't that interesting? So that brings us to more or less the end of this entire thing, um, at least so far. Uh, yes, it is true that after this uh, dropped, Crazy Slick went missing for a short period of time, but he has been located. Basically, when this, uh, when this, uh, when Trainwreck came out about this, uh, Crazy Slick freaked out and disappeared for a couple of uh, for a couple of hours or. or I don't think it was a, I don't know how many hours it was total. Um, let me see if I can find out that information. I didn't actually know about the exact amount of time. He was gone for like a day or, or two. Uh, not, not all that long, but there was concerns because he went uh, missing. Um, but he has been found. He is not dead or anything like that. Uh, he went, uh, he went, yeah, he, he, he took off. He took off. Um, Asmongold has pretty much said he's a piece of shit and wishes he would die. Yeah, that's not a good sign. Uh, yeah, Crazy Slick is no longer a part of OTK as far as I can tell. Um, uh, but I have no idea, 
uh, I have no idea what what uh, what you know sort of severance or anything like that may have been the case, uh, may have been involved there. Uh, isn't Asmongold a piece of shit? I don't know. I don't know much about Asmongold. Um, but Slick got booted from the house, and now Mizkiff is on leave. So we will see. And now we enter the final phase of the Drama Mama investigation. And every single Drama Mama investigation, at the very end of the Drama Mama investigation, we take a moment in which I evaluate everything that we've gone over, and I share my final opinions on it. And this one, honestly, despite the convolutedness of the narrative, despite how hard it was to find and make sense of everything that happened, I think the takeaway is fairly simple. What we have on our hands is a prime example of the exact, exa almost to a T, the exact same culture that was built in Hollywood around serial rapists and serial abusers like Harvey Weinstein. That's what we have going on here in Twitch. It has been replicated almost to a, like, to a shocking level. They are like identical twins, the exact same tactics, centralizing power on a handful of generally powerful and very, very rich men. Uh, those men using their social influence, their ties to the industry, their power over the industry, their power over other people's employment, their power over social spaces to take advantage of uh, the people themselves and also to cover for abusers of the space. You know what's funny is it's not even always the person on top who's the abuser, but the person on top is, uh, in this particular case, more than willing to aid and abet in the abuser in the space because that abuser is a friend and profitable. And of course, the other part of this that we see is that, uh, uh, is 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 that that the culture around Twitch, the viewer culture, the viewers, the the chatters, all of these people who are involved are insanely incapable of processing any sort of conversation around consent. They are trapped in like turn of the century level misogyny where any time a woman brings out any concern, she's a slut, she's a liar. They go through her history, they harass the shit out of her, they ruin her life. That's what we see. That is the standard right now, today in Twitch. That is what's going on in these spaces. That is what's being encouraged. That is what's being built up. That is what is being taught. That is what these people, these viewers, these kids, all these people on this platform are stewing in a highly misogynistic, highly, highly, highly uh, 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 rape apologetic space. And it is so fucking bad. It is so bad. It is so bad. It is so bad. And I don't even know where we can begin to fight back. Besides being sure that when we get the opportunity to stand up for people who've been harmed, that we stand up for them. And of course, the final takeaway of today's long, long, and very complicated drama mama is that, oh my god, Twitch is screwed. Twitch is blowing the fuck up, okay? And when I mean blowing up, I mean it's like rupturing, okay? These are some of the biggest figures on Twitch. All of them have been involved on this. There are so many eyes on this drama, and it is revealed that Twitch is a squirming and filthy underbelly. And on top of that, now they're cutting creator pay. Even Twitch staff is participating in, oh, I agree. I think Twitch, we, we already know for a fact that there was a ton of issues with Twitch staff standing by, looking the other way, and doing apologia for the disgusting treatment of minorities in their, in their spaces. We know that Twitch doesn't give a fucking shit about the amount of hate raids, about the obviously biased and obviously prejudiced treatment, the disgusting bigotry that flourishes on their site, because they're just making money. They do the bare minimum. What's truly shocking, what's truly rotten about all of this is that we now have, we had a chain of events that started with the shit camp bullshit and all of that pathetic, interclicky, immature, uh, infighting nonsense, screwing each other over, fucking up everything for everyone, totally unprofessional. So we have that whole shit, and then it rolls into the whole gambling drama where we reveal that there are tons of gigantic streamers who are currently peddling gambling to their 
to children. They are they are creating new gambling addicts. They are encouraging the creation of gambling addicts. And then out of that situation, because nobody can confront that issue, because that issue can't stand on its own, instead we have the revelation. Only, the only time we're able to actually address the fact that there was sexual assault that many people knew about and covered up for, the only thing that could do it was it being brought up in as a defense uh as a as a as a as a spear to shut down critique of gambling it is so fucked holy motherfucking god holy motherfucking god what a putrid shithole